everyone. Welcome to episode 70 of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Woo. It's a bit of a special one for a couple of reasons. One, it's our first podcast after E3. Two, we have a special guest this week. One of our patrons, one of our top supporters in general, regardless of what we do, uh, Mr. Mark Greenberg. Hello to everyone who knows me and everyone who doesn't. <laughs> there you go. A lot of a lot of our uh, sh- our live stream folks will probably recognize him, and then uh, obviously Eric Moore as always. Hello. And it's also special because this is the last podcast, uh, as far as I'm aware, for like the next month that we're going to be here, like in this setup, doing green screen, all of the jazz. Uh, because I technically, by the time most of you hear this, unless you are a ten dollar backer on Patreon and watching right now. Uh, this is the last time I will be recording. This is literally the last anything being recorded in our studio uh, until I have recovered from my hernia surgeries because I have to climb stairs to do this in the studio and I can't climb stairs. You should get a chairlift. Oh, yes. can I clear that with them with my insurance? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of that now. It's for work purposes. It please. is. It is. Um, yeah, so I honestly have no idea what's happening with the podcast episode after this one. We are a weekly podcast because uh, I can't come up here. Chances are it'll be recorded in my kitchen or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Let's get into why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have three big topics for you guys, and then uh, whatever we feel like doing for the final one, we'll, maybe some of us have things we want to talk about. Uh, I am warning you that we are... We don't have a theme for this week. Now, you guys know we've been doing themed podcasts, uh, you know, before the Road to E3 stuff and then the Road to E3 stuff, obviously our E3 podcast. Uh, because we know are not currently going to be doing our live prime news, you know, our prime cast on Fridays until I'm recovered, uh, all of our podcasts from here while I'm recovery is going to be news-based. So a lot of our topics are going to be stuff that are pulled out from the week of news because I like talking about news and I feel bad that I'm not doing Prime News or the Prime Cast. So we're just going to do it right here on the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Oh boy. Uh, all right. So let's just get right into our very first topic. And this one is a little funny. I don't know. I mean, is it funny? It's almost sad. It's kind of funny and sad. It's a little bit of both. Um. So... <laughs> We, we, we record on Thursdays, so literally the day we're recording this, a new commercial has dropped for Minecraft on Switch and Xbox. Yes, Switch and Xbox, because now there is officially cross-play between Xbox, Switch, Woo-hoo. and technically PC. So now that that's a thing, uh, they decided to drop a commercial. It's on, it's on the Xbox, YouTube. It's also on Nintendo's official YouTube and social media stuff. So it's a joint venture commercial. And... Uh, it pokes a little fun at PlayStation 4. Um, essentially, it's all it's going all fine. It's doing cuts back and forth between Xbox and Switch, showing that people are playing together. But then at the end, it does like this play together, come together, like this little alternating half and half thing, which is a direct ripoff of PlayStation commercials for PlayStation 4, uh, where they do the Greatness Awaits thing. <laughs> it, it's it's very, very much intentional. Uh, it, it's It's way too intentional. Uh, to not be, to, to just be a coincidence. They're, they're doing mm-hmm. it on purpose because there's no crossplay with with PlayStation. I don't know if you guys know that. I'm sure most of you do, but PlayStation doesn't do crossplay with anything but PC uh, because it doesn't view PC as a competitor. But the funny thing is, Minecraft is no longer being updated on PlayStation Four, so there's that as well. That's kind of Microsoft's <laughs> response. Oh, you won't crossplay because you need to protect the children. Well, then we're just not going to update our game anymore. Oops. I personally would pull the game from PlayStation, but I mean, it's a big audience. Maybe, you know, okay. Yeah. Um, money talks, I guess, more than anything. So, <laughs> uh, what I want to ask you guys is is this a big deal, a little deal uh, that Sony is still blocking crossplay with Xbox and Switch? And a caveat to this is that a now former Sony employee has come out to say that he is well aware the only reason they're doing it is because of money and they said this in a private meeting inside of Sony that they are not allowed. Like Sony's it, never publicly said that they're blocking crossplay for, for monetary, <laughs> for monetary purposes. But the so Sony employee is like, yeah, is, yeah, that's is, exactly why they're doing it. It's the reason why this is an ex Sony employee because he leaked this. 
<laughs> probably. I, and he did it after he quit or, oh, or got fired. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. We don't know why he's an ex-employee. Well, but, um, so big deal or little deal that Sony's still blocking, blocking crossplay. I mean, I think it's a little deal, but coupled with the E3 and their honestly, in my opinion, horrible conference, it's a big deal because I think Sony's getting cocky. They're getting too just overconfident, and I think that's going to hurt them in the next console generation. I think if they came out with a great E3, this would be a lot less of a deal to me, at least. Yeah, I see what you're saying yeah, there because yeah. uh, my my whole feeling is like when they first like we've known there wasn't gonna be crossplay with us for a long time because again my quote about protecting the children is actually from last year's E3, <laughs> yep. um, and there's been other games that have accidentally quote unquote accidentally turned on crossplay features with PlayStation Four and Xbox uh, before Sony swooped in and got mad at them, uh, so they had to turn it off. So it's not even thing; it's, it's not possible. Sony just well, doesn't want anyone yeah. on their platform to do it. So. It, <laughs> My my thing is is I thought it was a bummer last year, but everyone everyone's known why they're doing it, right? You're the market leader. You want everyone buying a PlayStation to play with PlayStation gamers because the biggest benefit is not isn't the PlayStation gamers, it's the Xbox and Switch gamers that can now play with their PlayStation 4 friends. Um but it also works vice versa, of course. You know, anyone who's playing on PlayStation has friends that play Xbox and Switch. Uh, but it's a money it's a money thing. Make oh, everyone yeah. buy a PlayStation For if sure. you want to play with PlayStation people. I get the the reason, mm-hmm. but they just can't come out and say that. Like, I wish Sony would just come out and literally say, "Yeah, if you want to play a PlayStation, then buy a PlayStation." Yeah, like, right? I know no, that, that sounds sense. scummy, but that's quite that's literal. It's, that that it's, makes sense. It's less scummy than what they're doing now. Yeah, protect the children, or uh, we have to work out the infrastructure, or we work have to, <laughs> or, or what they're doing with Fortnite. Like everyone can import their data from any other console to Switch, but PlayStation. Yeah. Even yeah. if you had an Epic Game account, all of your stuff wasn't actually tied to your Epic Game account on PlayStation. It was tied to your stupid PlayStation account. So all this money you spent on PlayStation on Fortnite, you can't port any of that stuff you bought over to Switch on Fortnite. A completely free game. Um, why it's like that, and why like you can port over your PC stuff, you can port over your Xbox stuff, you can't port over PlayStation Four, so you have to start yeah. all over again on Switch. Um, so like it's it's kind of, and that's like that's not even crossplay, right? That's that's just allowing people to have the things they already paid which is, for, which is really weird that it's not tied to your Epic account. It's just, Sony didn't want it that way, yeah, but that sh- Sony wanted that cut of the profits, so it's tied to their stuff. I don't think uh, that's it. I think it's possible that the Epic accounts are tied to specific systems. So once that a, a system has used an Epic account, if I'm using that same account on a Switch, I could play with a PS4 because I'll ha- already have PS4 friends on that account. And so technically that might be a way to cheat the system. And so Sony doesn't want to risk it. And so I think that that one might be possible that it was just kind of part of just something that got stuck there because they didn't have another choice if they unless they wanted to allow crossplay. But I completely agree with y'all that what they're doing. They is do just allow crossplay right. with Fortnite. Well, with with PC. They, yeah. Yeah, I mean with Nintendo Switch and the Xbox. Yeah. yeah. Like because the Epic account is is universal. I have one on I, I made my account originally on PC. I've used it on my Xbox and I use it on Switch. Um, it's all the same account. Uh, there's nothing tied to anything else. All the stuff I've ever earned, I can use on Xbox, Switch, or PC without any hassle. But I can't use any of it on PlayStation 4. And likewise, you right. can, even though I can log in with my Epic account on PlayStation 4, mm-hmm. none of my stuff from, from my Switch, Xbox, or PC, well, PC will, but Switch and Xbox won't transfer over to PlayStation 4, and vice versa, PlayStation 4 won't transfer off. Of, like It's weird because it, it's technically tied to your Epic account, but if you, the platform you bought it on determines if it can be shared. Right. So if you bought the content on your PlayStation 4, you can't bring that content over. It's it's really, and I understand why it works that way, because any time you spend money on Switch or on, uh, on the digital stuff or on Xbox or on PlayStation, a 30% cut of everything you bought goes to the platform holder. So technically there is a, a closer relationship. Mm-hmm. Or on PC, that's not the case, but... On Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation, 30% of anything you ever buy digitally goes straight to the platform holder. That's how Nintendo makes money off Fortnite. 
They don't make money off offering it as a free download. They make it off people buying microtransactions mm-hmm. in the game. Uh, so it's uh, Sony just doesn't want to share any data at all. Um, even if it's data that isn't for a game they actually own and control. Yeah, I just, I it's mean, tough. I just bought a PS4 for the exclusives. Spider-Man. And yes, Spider-Man <laughs> specifically. I, I, I love Marvel, but uh, not really where I'm going. Where I'm going is when I look at that, I'm never going to play, uh, buy any game that I can buy on another system on that system because I also have an Xbox because of the cross-platform thing and i think that it's anti-consumer and i think that even for me it's hurting them because i'm buying less games on their system and more games on the xbox even though i honestly prefer their controller layout and a lot of stuff they do i don't like the non-cross-platform and i think that a lot of gamers agree with me and i think there's a lot of sony fanboys out there but i think that when it comes to the next console generation if that xbox can keep out can keep some good exclusives. I think they're just going to pass them just because Sony's being too cocky. And it's kind of the same thing that happened with the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Xbox got too cocky and uh, PS4 just shot up. And I think that it's going to flip flop. Yeah. And you got a good point there though, that that is something that could eventually hurt Sony. I think is if, if they don't evolve cross play with certain games, guess what? People are just going to start buying other consoles to play cross play and, you know, who cares about, I mean, you got your exclusives, but, you know, eventually they're just going to stop selling the ones that you can buy on other, other platforms to play with other people. It's a case of, like, like Mark brought up earlier how he feels like Sony had a really bad press conference at E3. And it's it's strange because every single game show, Sony showed was amazing. Mm-hmm. But the actual show itself... Mm-hmm was an hour of completely wasted time and in when in that intermission which was absolutely ridiculous half, like 40 minute long intermission um where they didn't really show any games if you listen to what was being said during the intermission it was a bunch of sean Layden and sony execs basically talking about how great they are <laughs> for 40 minutes you had to hear about how great playstation is nice no humbleness to it yeah. no talk about actual games yeah just we're amazing. We're, we're we're the market leader. We're this. We're that. It's like, yes, oh, we well, already knew this. That, that, that's that's, that's, that's great. You want a cookie? I mean, like we're here. We're here for the games. Yeah, and you're not showing us games. Um, so it was really weird because like every game they showed was amazing, but they they just it's almost like they didn't have enough for a press conference and they knew it. Mm-hmm. So we needed to drag it out to try to make it feel like we had enough. Well, we had. I would have rat. We had to get the crowd out of the the castle at some point. Well, though. I'd rather see them do what Nintendo used to do. And throw up a bunch of pie charts and slides about how great they are. <laughs> because Nintendo used to be like, oh, look at our year-to-year growth in this. Or we sold X amount of this. Like, it basically yeah. felt like a mini investors meeting. Yeah. But at least there, they like, well, it. at least you're giving us something to look at. Instead right. of being like, yeah, we're the best. Yeah. Like, because you said so? Okay, cool. Yeah, can we can we see a game now? Yeah, wait. I think we should put up a pie chart here that says... Oh, well, uh, we're almost done with intermission. Hold on. Yeah, hold yeah. on. I hear, I hear we're going any second now. Oh, well, okay, we got to waste another 10 minutes. Um, I think we should put up a pie chart here that says uh, we're the best uh, podcast around. We're the best that ever was. Uh, it's so between that press conference, between uh, Sony's attitude with crossplay, but just in general, this feels a lot like the end of the PlayStation 2 era. And it, I don't really, as a Nintendo guy, I'm not necessarily caring whether Sony's successful with the PlayStation 5 or not, mm-hmm. outside of the fact that I want a healthy market. So I don't want Nintendo to be alone. I, like a lot of people be like, oh, Nint- we want Nintendo to be the only system. Like, no, I don't want that. I don't want Xbox to be the only system. I like a healthy market with three systems in it, which is we were actually in the midst of the longest there's ever been three systems surviving in the market mm-hmm. uh, because usually it doesn't happen. Someone always gets pushed out. Uh, but instead, Xbox has still moved almost 40 million units. PlayStation's at, up at 70, Switch is at 20. Like we have three systems that are making money and, and doing okay on the marketplace at the same time. Uh, and we know we're on the horizon of PlayStation 5 and Xbox 2 or 720 or whatever they decide. Whatever Maybe they just call it Xbox. I don't know. Who I don't know what Microsoft's doing anymore. Xbox Triple X. But uh, whatever it is, there's going to be new systems coming within the next two to three years. And it, it's very interesting looking at what Sony's doing now because this is the kind of thing that just gives gives uh, Xbox and so and like Nintendo all the edge in marketing. Mm-hmm. Because 
Xbox got full of themselves at the end yep. of the 360 era. So when they announced the X, they thought they were, or the Xbox One, they're like, we, not only are we going to call it One, because that makes no no sense, <laughs> uh, we are going to call it that because it's an all-in-one multimedia center. They got so full of themselves, they thought they could just own the entire living room. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, the, sure. The, the idea behind it? Fantastic. But not for the price point. There's right. the problem. You can just buy a Roku that does all of the stuff that people want a multimedia thing to do for like 50 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to buy like, a 400, 500, oh, I'm sorry, $500 system, you need to sell it on the premise of the games machine because that's why you're spending $500. You're not spending $500 to watch Netflix. Yeah. Uh, so like there was a really weird, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have cable pass through. Yeah. It's called an HDMI slot in the back of my TV. Why do I, I can't hit one button on my controller. I have to spend $500 because what? Uh, it, it's like they were so cocky and full of themselves that literally I remember uh, Sony Z3 was nothing but trolling. Here's how you share games with friends. And it was just a guy handing mm-hmm. another person the game. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, all they are, oh, yeah. oh, the other system. Yeah, yeah, we have PlayStation Move. Oh, by the way, it's not bundled in. And it, our system only costs $400 and it's more powerful than Xbox. And it's like... Yeah, that was like, the oh, time where Microsoft decided to take a crap on like, itself. So, and so like Microsoft set themselves up. Sony took complete advantage, and yeah, Sony was getting cocky, but Sony knew it. Sony knew they had they won. They they knew and, before their system even hit the market that there was no, the Xbox didn't stand a chance. But Nate, uh, that's kind of my thing with the next couple generations. I think that Xbox, at least right now, to me, I feel like I kind of li- I like Phil Spencer, and I think that he. Sure kind of knows where to take it at least i think he kind of has figured it out after that and i i mean sony was looking great and now they're kind of spiraling downhill and but then the other thing that i want to touch on is uh sony fanboys who say who talk about how this doesn't matter it's we're sony we're the greatest i think that that i think that there's two ways that can be a large group of people and that can be a smaller group but a louder crowd and i kind of think it's that because even when i look up on sony channels a lot of sony youtubers were upset with e3 a lot of them weren't a lot of them were like it was great but like a lot of them were like the presentation was horrible and i saw a lot in the comments like there were a ton of people loud people who were like stop this and we're better and all this but i think there are a lot of realistic gamers who joined sony and have been going riding sony for the past like five years on the ps4 especially with exclusives, but I, I just feel like Xbox could very easily win those people over with some good games. And so I kind of think it all goes back to the games and it does. I mean, I, yeah, it, 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 the thing is, is this coincided with the fact that Microsoft, at least in my opinion, had a very impressive conference. Uh, it, yes. A lot of the games they show were third parties that that's fine. But in the midst of the conference, they said, yeah, we know that we have, all, all we have is a bunch of third-party games to show you. That's why we bought this studio and this studio and this studio and this studio, and they're all making games now exclusively for Xbox, which isn't going to fix Xbox One. No. But it's going to fix Xbox Two or whatever's next. Yeah. Um, they're basically saying, we have doubled our teams. We're going to have way the hell more exclusives next time around, and these are all studios you guys know and love. Um, so it, it, to me, it's... Not only did they have a nicely paced conference, they had a nice conference that really cared, seemed like it cared about gamers anyways. Uh, and then obviously Phil Spencer, um, since he took over as head of Xbox, and he's also now a higher up exec as well, which is why the Xbox division suddenly has a lot more money to spend, such as Vine Studios, uh, that it, it's very interesting to see that I think Xbox, after everything that happened at the beginning of Xbox One, ate a lot of humble pie and said, look, we got to get Phil Spencer mm-hmm. to lead the way. He's a gamer. He knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then Phil Spencer has done nothing but try his darndest to turn the reputation of it around. He unbundled Kinect. Uh, he tried to, he, he's tried to push things like, I, I know it's controversial for some people, but Xbox Game Pass is a hell of a deal for gamers. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be a hell of a deal on Xbox Two if they have five new development studios that are making exclusive games. That's even more content for value you're going to get for just ten dollars a month. Uh, so, like, I, I know some people are against that all digital future thing that Xbox seems to be going towards, but it's hard to argue that yeah, they're going towards it, but they're giving you a hell of a value for doing it. And if you do it, it also works on PC, so you can actually get it on both systems for just ten bucks. Mm-hmm. That's really really cool. Um, and on top of that, PlayStation just getting full of themselves. Uh, Microsoft seems to be buddying up with Nintendo. I would not be surprised if Minecraft isn't the only Microsoft game we ever see on a Nintendo Switch. 
Uh, I I would not be surprised to see, see them try to get another um, another multi-platform game like that that they just say, Sony, you're not going to have it. We're going to put it on Switch. Yeah. And that's just the way it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, because Switch doesn't really directly compete, right? Like, Switch is a handheld. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I know Nintendo calls it what a home console. Yeah, I was going to say. It's portable a home, console. home console. But fine, it's a portable home <laughs> console and Xbox isn't. So there you yeah, go. Right. They don't really, really technically compete uh, in a traditional sense. And Nintendo doesn't uh, has nothing but nice things to say about Microsoft, Microsoft vice versa. Uh, whereas Sony is just at every corner. They could talk about their competition. It's basically like, yeah, forget them. No. It's like they, they don't exist. They don't matter to us. We're number one. And it's like, yeah, you, you've been. Yeah, you've done. You were number one before, too. And you blew it. Mm-hmm. Another thing like is one of the games that I've seen across. Uh, uh, I don't know if y'all have seen it. It was at the end of the Microsoft conference. And I know y'all were, I think, on a plane or something. But mm-hmm. it, I've seen it on Sony things, P- PC things, uh, PS4 thing, YouTube channels, not things. But what I. And it's Cyberpunk 7, 2077. Yeah, 2077. Yep. Yeah, I think that game looks like that game looks stunning. It looks incredible. And I think that if Xbox like keeps that at their conference and they keep that uh, and they even maybe even have better optimization for the Xbox One than they do for the PS4 if they want to pay for that. I don't really or Xbox Two. Yeah, I think Cyberpunk 2077 is next gen. Yeah. That looks way just, too good for the current gen. For sure. But I just think that the way that that game could push people would be huge, even if it's not a, an exclusive, even even if it oh, just yeah. has it, some it won't DLC be on the Xbox. I can guarantee that. It'll be a, an exclusive marketing deal. Mm-hmm. Something I've been arguing that Nintendo needs to dabble in if they want Western third-party support is you need to establish exclusive marketing deal with AAA publishers, which I, it was funny when I said that a lot of people were like, no, they shouldn't do that. I'm like, then they're not going to get Western AAA third-party support. Yeah. Sony's doing it. Microsoft's doing it. If Nintendo doesn't want to play that game, yeah, you got to play the but, game if you want to get those developers back. Mm-hmm. But why do people care if Nintendo gets on the marketing thing? Yeah, I don't know why they care either. It's not like it affects them. Well, Nintendo's a it, multi-billion dollar company. I understand the not, idea is, oh, they shouldn't give money to other multi-billion dollars. It's not about giving them money. <laughs> it's about, imagine if Nintendo had approached uh, you know, CD Projekt Red and said, we're going to offer you more money than Microsoft for exclusive marketing rights for Cyberpunk 2077. Now, only would it be a big boon for Nintendo. That would mean Cyberpunk 2077 is coming to Nintendo. Mm-hmm. So it's not like it wouldn't also come to Xbox and PlayStation 4 and look better on those platforms, but it would mean Nintendo's also getting it. It gets you out ahead of the competition and gets like, you just to show it they, off. If they knocked on Activision door and said, hey, look, we're going to offer you a bigger deal for the marketing thing than, than Sony's offering right now. Because guess what, folks? Nintendo has more money than Sony. I'm not trying to diss Sony here. Sony's money is more diver- diversified, mm-hmm. but Nintendo is actually more money in the bank and for a long time this year had a higher stock valuation than Sony. Mm-hmm. But Nate, uh, the thing is that I think that we're all kind of, I guess, forgetting is Dark Souls 3. And they had the marketing, or Dark Souls Remastered, not Dark Souls 3, sorry. Yeah. But they had the marketing, they had that, and it gets delayed. Yeah, And yeah, that yeah. No. kills it. And so I think that for them to do that again, I think they need to have certain things in place, like same-day release. Oh, or sure, sure. It's not something they could like do that. with anything now, is, is what I'm kind yeah. of getting at. Yeah, you know, it's I possible do. they have it with Doom, mm-hmm. because we know Panic Button is uh, has a big port a switch a big triple a switch port announcement that's supposed to be happening next month um and uh panic button of course is the one who ported doom and ported mm-hmm. wolfenstein wolfenstein's done now it's coming out what's mm-hmm. the next game going to be well there's another doom game being made that's only been kind of sort of announced as it exists but they didn't talk about it at e3 hmm. notice how bethesda did not mention it at e3 yeah so i'm wondering if it's yeah it didn't get mentioned because it's going to be day and date on switch and nintendo bought marketing rights so now they're going to advertise it I think I think that's actually, especially when they say if that is what Panic Button announces, if that's what Panic Button announces, there was zero marketing for for this game until then. Yeah. So obviously Nintendo bought marketing for it, mm-hmm. but we'll see. Obviously, I'm guessing because we don't actually know what the game is. It could, for all we know, it's Fallout 76. I, we have no idea what Panic Button's doing. Right. Uh, but considering that they've only been porting Bethesda games, I assume it's another Bethesda <laughs> game. And considering that the new Doom game uh, was talked about by a developer to be, still be made on the ID Tech 6 engine, which is exactly the engine that the last Doom game and Wolfenstein 2 was built on, 
Yeah. Obviously, Switch can run the next Doom game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's. I don't know. I, I the thing is, is I, I kind of smile and I smirk over you a little bit over Sony being Sony again. Yeah, I, like they were before, like back in PlayStation Two. But it's still one of those. I don't really want this to be a thing. Though. I want, I want fans of all platforms to be happy. Mm-hmm. I don't care what platform you guys play on. Obviously, we're a N- Nintendo base, but uh, I don't care if you play on Xbox, PC, PlayStation. Heck, I'm not, I don't care if you're buying an Atari box. Like none of that matters to me. Uh, what matters to me is that no matter what you play on, you're happy. And the thing is, is PlayStation fans don't seem to be happy with the lack of crossplay. Yeah, people who aren't PlayStation fans aren't happy with the lack of crossplay. So no one's happy about it, but Sony. Yep. And that to me lets you know you're disconnecting with your fans. Mm-hmm. Your fans aren't happy with you. The people who aren't fans of you aren't happy with you because of it. Why are you doing doing this decision that's clearly just about money, but you're denying at every turn that it's about money? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and that's the thing: the fans are going to have to start speaking with their money. Well, that, and that's what's going to happen. I think the next Xbox, assuming that whenever they announce it, and and if they announce a whole bunch of exclusive games coming forward in that first year, I think it's going to capture audiences. And I, mm-hmm. I have a feeling that what Microsoft did with X is exactly what's going to happen with the next Xbox, where not only is it going to have a bunch of exclusive games in the first year or two, it's going to be the most powerful system on the market, and it's probably going to match the price of the PlayStation 5. Yeah, I, th- I think Xbox, I, I think Phil Spencer has been like, look, when we entered the console space, we broke in with our online system, with Halo, and having the most powerful system on the market. Mm-hmm. We need Let's to keep to having the most powerful system on the market. It might mean we can't get back up to Xbox 360 sales, you know, where we're at 80 million. But if we can get the, if we can just coast at 60 million, mm-hmm. and we have 60 million Xbox Live accounts, and, and half of those accounts are also Game Pass accounts, mm-hmm. like, all of that's going to make up for any revenue we would lose in 20 million in sales, giving that up to PlayStation or, or mm-hmm. Nintendo or something. Yeah. I think that's the strategy. And I think it's brilliant because I think that what Nintendo's doing, I think, is more future proof mm-hmm. because people want gaming anywhere. Yeah. And right now, phones, as, as amazing as phone gaming can get, mm-hmm. it's still not perfectly ideal for every type of game out there. Nintendo's offering a solution that's like that, and I hope they continue to to invest in the Switch Lite concept for you know the next decade or so until they can come up with something better. That's the future, uh, and I think Nintendo's kind of got that market cornered, and Microsoft's going to concede that market. Be like, we're not going to come after people right. who want gaming right. everywhere. We're still going to go after for under TV, and if we're going to go after under, under TV, we need to do it in a way that no one else can. We have money. We're a PC company. Mm-hmm. We're giving you the most powerful damn box you can have under your TV. I wouldn't be well, surprised if, if they come out. They come out and this next system isn't just 4K, isn't just native 4K. They start out in 120 FPS. Dang. And they just say, we went balls to the wall. Yeah. This system's $500, but it rivals mid-grade gaming PCs, period. Yeah. Yeah. End of the story, done. Yeah. We're, we're not messing around. Yeah. That vapor chamber cooling we did with Xbox One, now it's the whole system. Yeah. Like I, they're going to go balls to the wall because they, they have to. Yeah, they got no right. reason not to at this point. Yeah, nothing to lose. They, they're they're like, they got more money than any of the three companies to mess around. with. And that's the thing too is, is that you know I can kind of see them with with the part kind of quote unquote in a way wink wink nudge nudge partnership with Nintendo. Yeah, you know we'll stay out of your market. You stay out of our market. We'll kind of play back and forth, advertise for each other a little bit here and there. Yeah. We'll, we'll, you know, give you your your, your people. We'll give ours. And, and obviously, my hope is, hey, Nintendo, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, be like, hey, Microsoft, here's the deal. We'll we'll throw Banjo Kazooie as a Smash Bros. DLC character, but yeah, you need to like get us in with EA and uh, yeah, right. and Activision a little bit. Right. Like, open that door for us and get us in in the door so they'll listen to us. Right. Um. Because I think happen. Nintendo right now, if they called EA, EA might not even pick up the phone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how little EA cares about Nintendo. Yeah, um, I'm sure they pick up the phone, but they would just well, be like, they'd just be like down in a beer at the it, bar where they pretend they're. they're they'd listening. pick up the phone and then they'd sit it right back down. <laughs> they're gonna put you on speakerphone while yeah. I'm taking a piss. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just yeah that, that that relationship is not good right now, folks. No. Um, Sad. Yeah. And some of you might not Sad. care because you don't like EA, and that's fine. But there's so many EA games that like. The fact that Madden's coming to PC after a decade of not coming to PC, but will not come out on Switch. It's like, 
Switch clearly has a market for sports games. We have NBA 2K19 coming back now. Mm-hmm. We have FIFA. They weren't even going to do a FIFA 19, but FIFA 18 sold so well they're doing that. Like, there's obviously Mario Tennis Aces is is out now. You know, as when you guys shoot this podcast, like, there's obviously a market for sports games on here. Heck, RBI Baseball 2018 just came out. I know it was late, but it came out. Like, yeah, the <sighs> yeah. I just I'm not sure how much we're going to get of EA at all, and I think that probably partly has to do with our unprecedented partnership for the Wii U. <laughs> oh, that Wii U. I don't know and what the hell happened I there. think that that lost a lot of trust in EA because they were like, this Wii U's not selling, screw it, because they they have money but not as much. And I think that right now for EA to an, – I think that EA needs to get the goodwill of gamers, and I think that they're almost trying to stay really – this is honestly what I think is going to harm us the most is they're trying to stay safe. They don't want to spend money where they where it sure. might not pay off, and and they want the will of gamers back, the goodwill of gamers back. And what I guess the problem is is if they go to Switch and they screw it up, even if gamers are like, "Yes, Madden on Switch," and they screw up Madden on Switch, it's like it's like we you all over again trust. But at the but at the same point in time, it's it's not that hard of a concept. It's you bring Madden to Switch, but you don't make it an old version of Madden. You keep it as the current version or something pretty damn close to the current version, not yeah, what they I, did before. Yeah, what they did on Wii U is it, terrible. It's, it's, like, like, the unprecedented partnership was dead before the Wii U even launched. Uh, and you could tell by the effort put into Madden because there was no reason Madden couldn't have been the current gen version. It, the Wii U was just as powerful as Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. There was literally no reason it could not be the current gen version. Mm-hmm. But it's because EA didn't give a crap. So they just ported the prior year's version and slapped the new title on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and like that was such a, like for me as a Madden fan, I bought it. Or I didn't even buy it because I knew about it. But then Yulia bought it for me because she knows how much I like Madden. So she bought the digital copy, of course, that I can't resell. Mm-hmm. And I was and she because she didn't know. And no, I'm right, just like, right, right. and so then I'm like, fine, let me play it. Oh my god, this really is last year's version of Madden. And mm-hmm. it was a big year at that time because that was the year they switched to the physics engine. Mm-hmm. So it was no longer canned animations. And here I am playing the canned animations version. Well. All the other consoles have a better version, but they're not actually necessarily more powerful systems. So there's no, there's no Point. Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 to Wii excuse here. Yeah, this is no, this is just like your systems, but we're not going to give it to you. Uh, and the, to be fair, there there's two games EA gave us out of that whole fiasco that ended up being okay. Uh, one of them ended up being actually pretty good. The Need for Speed port that came eight months too late. <laughs> That and that was the best game EA brought over. Ran perfectly well. Was perfectly optimized. Yeah, they had to cut out two drivers in online mode, but that's because of uh, some CPU limitations. But they they did the best they could. That was fine. Uh, and then they also uh, the Mass Effect Three port wasn't the greatest port job in the world, but it, it was still the full game and it functioned and you could play it start to finish. So. That's it. Every other game they brought over in that first year was garbage, and it's because EA stopped. Like EA, so, at some point after the unprecedented partnership was announced, was like, yeah, we're done. The like, I almost wondered if Nintendo. I I don't know what happened, but I think Nintendo hoodwinked them, because Nintendo was hoodwinking people with Wii U the year it was announced. Because mm-hmm. they announced it with that unprecedented partnership. They announced it saying, "This is a uh, Wii for you. This is a hardcore gaming system." And then a year later at E3, they ended with Nintendo Land. Like, they were hoodwinking everyone. Yeah. Nintendo was over-promising and under-delivering, I think, from day one with Wii U. To not just consumers. They were doing it to, to, to third-party companies. So, like, EA was probably, like, Nintendo was telling them probably that this was going to be a, a true next-generation system. And here it was just another 360. When the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 were right around the corner. Like, mm-hmm. of course EA wasn't interested in that. Why, why do we want another Xbox 360? Right. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I just, I just like a market where all all fans are happy. And I feel like for a little bit here now, especially after this E3, we could have had like Sony fans are still going to be happy with PlayStation for now, even with the cockiness, because there's good games coming. And that's the thing that's going to keep PlayStation five still selling. Okay. Is that they're going to have good exclusives because Sony has good exclusive games. Like they just do, um, you know, MLB, the show, I wish that was something we can get on Xbox, PC, or Switch. Like, I wish we had a baseball game that was that good. Right. Let's talk with RBI. RBI is okay for what it is, especially since it's only $30. Mm-hmm. 
But it's not like I, I wish it was that thirty dollar baseball game that was trying to pull off, you know, the NFL two K. Yeah. Where it's like we're charging twenty bucks versus sixty, but creating a product we feel like is better. Yeah. RBI baseball it has been getting better to their credit, but I mean, it's just there's not a true competitor. Mm-hmm. Um definitely. You know, they got Death Stranding that's going exclusive to the PlayStation. No one else is ever gonna get that game. Yeah. I mean, one, Kojima is in Sony's pockets, like that's just He's been tied. He's been tied so close to Sony for years. Even when he's at Konami, it's not a surprise. Uh, but I don't know. I think it's, we gotta move on to the next yeah. topic. This is we could talk about this all day. I mean, so, let me, guys, let us know what you think down in the comments and all. Like, there's so much crazy stuff surrounding this crossplay stuff. Sony, like, why Nintendo can't get like certain games? It's just. Uh, I think to sum it up, it's not a big deal, not a little. It's just dumb. It's just. It's, just it's, dumb. it's, it's not good for anyone. No. No one wins. And also. No like, one wins. What we got to remember is there's a ton of gamers from all systems, even PC everywhere that's calling for EA's heads. The only good thing that I've seen from EA is a star this year is a Star Wars game that's not that we don't even that all we know is the name of and part of the story and it's a small hint and Madden on PC. PC. Other mm-hmm. than that, well, I'm not The people who went hands on who the people who actually play the Anthem demo like the media that did, that like not not the can demo at EA Play, like they actually played the game. All of them have nothing but glowing. Yeah, it looks say. it looks amazing. Whether or okay. not it's going to take off, I don't know. Yeah, but then Anthem as well. But I think that there's a lot of gamers who were like calling for EA's heads, and I think that EA, whether I think that this is kind of also another thing that could be talked about in the comments is how is EA going to get back to. S- the gamers trust because it's great you don't have loot boxes but you never should have in the first place That's well they still have like, loot boxes yeah i mean just in the I sports still do but like yeah. i mean in the in anthem yeah, and yeah, yeah. but right, like yeah. you're not gaining back a lot of people's trust now i just where's ea gonna go how are they gonna get back to being one of the leading places because right now they're a lot of people don't like them i mean i don't think ea has ever cared about being liked yeah no they've been voted like Worst company in America, like seventeen times over the last twenty years, mm-hmm. and yet they're still the most profitable video and company in the world. Like they don't give a crap as long as they're making money. Mm-hmm. I think I think what got their attention and what they're trying to do, they're not trying to appease gamers right now with all these announcements yeah. and no loot boxes. Like it sounds nice, what they're trying to do is appease investors who got mad at them that Disney got pissed at them over Battlefront. Mm-hmm. Because they didn't give a crap that fans were complaining. Notice yeah, no. how they didn't do anything about loot boxes when fans complained. No. After Disney emailed them, that's when they changed. Yeah. They don't give a crap about what fans think. No. Because we keep buying their games. Mm-hmm. Battlefront 2 is still gonna is still on pace to sell over 10 million copies. Like it the games are still selling. EA's got the, here's the problem. As much as people hate on EA, they make good games. They do. Sadly. Like they do. you could hate the microtransactions, hate the DLC. Hate the loot boxes, but the core game is still pretty damn good. Yeah, I, I mean, like I Battlefront went, 2's core gameplay, I went is, is fun. I went hands on with the Battlefront Two DLC, the Han Solo. It, oh, it was good. phenomenal. It was good. Like Anthem, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Madden, really damn good if you like NFL. Yeah, but there's still microtransactions and DLC. And like, I, it doesn't affect me in Madden because I just don't play those gameplay modes and I never really have, so it doesn't matter to me. Now, when they take franchise mode and put loot boxes in there, I'm gonna be pissed. But it's, I don't know. E, e, that, that's the thing. EA, I don't think actually cares about gamers. They care about gamers' money. And as mm-hmm. much as, much as we, we might hear people bitch about EA, there's also 50,000 million more people that just don't care and they keep buying the games anyways. Yep. So, yeah. All their goodwill was just to make investors happy. And that's mm-hmm. fine. It's cool. I still like EA. They have, there's a new Dragon Age game in development. I can't wait to play it. <laughs> like... That's the thing. Like I can crap on EA, but I still like Madden. I still like Dragon yeah. Age. I, yeah. I think Battlefront 2 is actually kind of good. Yeah. Uh, I'd own it yeah. if it was on Switch. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just... I, at, at this point, all I really care is that somehow the relationship between EA and Nintendo can get mended so I can have my EA games on Switch. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. And I know EA is massively in bed with, with Xbox because of the EA Access thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... We'll see. It is what it is. Um, our next topic, uh, there's three games uh, that by the time you hear our next podcast will be out. By the time you hear this one, one will be out. But by our second podcast, two more will be coming. So essentially, these are the games that are coming out end of June. My Tennis Aces, 
already out or will be out as of the time of recording this in a couple hours. Uh, Crash Insane Trilogy and Wolfenstein 2. Those are the three big games landing on Switch before the end of this month. Which of these three games are you guys most excited for and why? Hmm. For me, it's it's Aces. I, I've had the hands-on experience. It's I mean, I had watched you play Wolfenstein. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It looked fantastic. But Aces for me is... A good Mario Tennis game? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yep. it's got a 78, I think, on Metacritic right now for reviews, which for a Mario Tennis game is damn high. Yeah, right? Like, that's good for a Mario Tennis game. And it's funny. Some of the ones I saw that were given it like a 7 or a 6 were like, yeah, it's a really, really good game, but damn, it's so difficult. I'm like... But that's, well, that's what I want. Bad. <laughs> that's thing. what I want. Skill the matter in, in yeah. Mario Tennis again. Oh man, Marco, what about for you? I mean, I'm on a Nintendo channel. I love Nintendo, and I want to say Mario Tennis Aces, but I have to go with Wolfenstein too, there just because. There you, there you go. Mario Tennis Aces. I've played it. I think the gameplay is incredible. I think I love the amount of characters, the the challenges, the solo mode. Like, I'm so hyped for getting that tomorrow it's going to be incredible but i the reason that i say wolfenstein 2 is because i think i've been so hyped for it and waiting for it for so long and i've like been staying away from the story online and i feel like Mm. there's i've just had a longer amount of time to get hyped for that sure and i can't believe that's almost here the fact that i'm about to be playing wolfenstein 2 a game that just launched on an xbox one and a ps4 in november and that has I played Wolf and the first Wolfenstein yeah. mm-hmm. that has a, one of the best campaign stories story wise I've ever played. And I don't know much about the Wolfenstein two campaign. Cause I'm trying to stay away right, from right. it, but I, I, I could tell you this, the Wolfenstein the two game itself is rated very high. Yeah. So the game is rated high. I've seen that, but like, that's not even as well, great as I'm sure the game is oh, yeah. the story itself the story. in Wolfenstein mm-hmm. games and Bethesda games is so good. I'm just really hyped to be able to play that on a Nintendo Switch on the go. Like, I'm about to go to the beach. I will be able to play a shooter game with a great story sitting on the beach looking at the sunset. I just Killing think that's, Nazis. That's yeah. incredible. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I get you. It, yeah. And I, like, I went a hands on with Wolfenstein too. I should have an impression video out for it before it launches. That's my plan, anyways. <laughs> So it's supposed to come out this weekend, but I technically haven't finished it yet. And with my surgery, we'll see what happens. Uh, but okay. what I can say is what I played of it, which had no story spoilers. So I can't even I can't even spoil the story for you if I wanted yeah, to. Right. Um, Wait, you pulled a lever. I pull, I pulled Sto- the lever. Spoiler warning. <laughs> you it, pulled the lever. I chopped. I, I like spiked a guy in the neck. Oh, <laughs> um, it's it, it plays phenomenally well. Um, I played the full, first Wolfenstein as well. I've actually played like 10 different Wolfenstein games because technically Wolfenstein one is a reboot of the whole franchise. But, uh, yeah, the first one was great. The second one felt great. Oh God, playing it in handle on switch just felt so amazing. Um, you know, when I look at these three games, cause like, obviously the one I'm most excited for is Mario tennis aces. It's been like my most hyped game of the year period. But, um, I got to give a shout out to crash and Saint trilogy for really one yeah. reason and one reason only, uh, we're getting this game because of one developer. Nice. So here's the story for those who don't know behind this game. It's it's stupid. Crash and Saint Trilogy was not going to come to Switch. It was never going to come to Switch. They weren't even thinking about bringing it to Switch. One developer, uh, well, it was being made for PlayStation 4, was in its final stages, about to go gold. Um, really loved Switch. He played he he played Switch like all the time, uh, and he's like. I wonder if this can run on Switch. So he took the code home with him, which you're not supposed to do, uh, in his Oops. free time over a weekend and got the first level running. Brought it back on Monday, showed it to his superiors, and they're like, oh, so it can run on Switch. Okay, let's port it. <laughs> it's so ridiculous yeah, that that's how this game got on Switch. And that's why I have to be like, I got to throw it up the crash. Yeah. I, I have to, like, I'm not even going to buy the game. <laughs> on the, I, I'm not because I, I'm principle of the fact that this isn't supposed to be on Switch and that Activision and all these companies that are behind it just don't give a crap. Yeah. Like, but we the, were just talking the, in the last time about how EA doesn't care about Switch. Activision doesn't either. Nobody the, cares about Switch. The only problem with that is... Like Bethesda, the only problem of. with that is is if you don't 
buy the game, there's no incentive for them to bring more games to the Switch. I don't care. They didn't. They, uh, here's my thing. And I know it's a back burner type of afterthought of bringing it to the Switch, my, but my they thi- did. But, but my, here's my thing, though. Who at that company looked at Crash and Zane Trilogy and said that can't run on That's Switch? Switch. Like, why did they think they it couldn't know, even I, run on Switch? Why were they surprised when this guy comes back? Yeah, here's the first level. Yeah. Works just fine. I, I, I don't know. That part, yeah, I don't know. Like, it, why did it take a rogue develop? And that's the thing. Like, this is what pisses me off about. This is, like, I'm excited for it because I, I never played these cr- the original Crash games. So, like, I'm really excited that it's on Switch. And maybe I'll pick it up someday. But at the same time, I'm like, man... Why? Why Why are we on the scrap heap where someone has to basically break the rules and use their free unpaid time to try to convince the company they work for to bring a game to a platform that can clearly run the game? Like, now I'm waiting for some rogue developer to do it with Spyro Reignited. Yeah, right? Yeah. Because I, I saw it. Spyro Reignited looks fantastic. It can run on Switch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Call of Duty. I'm sorry. It ran on Wii U. It can run on Switch. Yeah, they're not going to do it, but it can run on Switch. Like it, it's just, it's ridiculous to me that it takes this kind of effort to get a game on Switch uh, from these companies. And I know, like Wolfenstein Two, like I'm, I'm stoked for, I'm getting Wolfenstein Two. It's happening. Period. If I have the money, I'm grabbing it day one. Mm-hmm. Um, but my thing is, I'm even a little wary of Bethesda mm-hmm. because, sure, we got Wolf Two. Sure, we got Doom. They use the same engine. Might get the next Doom. Might get the next Wolf if they use the same engine. Great. We're not getting Rage 2. We're not getting Fallout 76. Is Bethesda really even dedicated? Yeah. Or is it just because they knew the ID Tech 6 engine would run on Switch? And, uh, I mean, your Bethesda thing, I think that's kind of worrisome, but I think that I want to say on my thing the reason i'm not buying crash is it's just not my type of game i I like some 2d games i'm not i was never a fan of crash and so i'm not buying it and i think that i mean and i think that's why i'm not buying it to show my supporters that i'm it's not even like oh i'll try it it's that i'm never gonna play it (laughs) because i'm not the biggest fan of crash yeah yeah. what else yeah but the other thing that i wanted to say about these third parties is I mean, I don't even care about these smaller games. I think Rage 2 I'd love to have, but it's kind of similar to Doom, and I don't really care. What I am kind of looking for is I kind I really want to see something like Fallout 76. I want to see, even if it's just one game from the developer in like a year, I want to see those bigger games, the Call of Duties, the Fallouts. The I want to see equal treatment. Yeah. yeah. Here's I the just, thing. like People tell me, oh, just wait for year three. Nobody else has to wait for year three. Right, exactly. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, day one had all full, full third-party support. And I know mm-hmm. some people are going to talk about, oh, port station. Yes, that had to do with exclusives. It, they ported PlayStation 3 exclusive I, games. I will throw one caveat at this. What? Nothing is like the Switch, though. No. With the portability well, nothing, of it. Nothing's like the Switch except for every mobile device on the planet. Not new technology. And some of these games that Switch doesn't have are on the Tegra X1 on NVIDIA Shield. So it can run on the platform already. Okay. It's kind of ridiculous. If you actually go look at the games available on the NVIDIA Shield using the exact same technology, and Switch doesn't have those games, mm-hmm. it's ridiculous. Um, it's literally down to the fact that it's Nintendo and they don't want to make games for Nintendo. And I know some of you are going to say, oh, technologically impossible. Nothing's no, technologically no. impossible. I'm sorry. I have witnessed a lot of these third-party games that also happen to be on PC running on lower specs and worse everything than Switch is. Because mm-hmm. they can. Mm-hmm. It's not. And nothing's impossible. They have to want to do it and put in the effort. No, definitely. And it does take money. And you have to wonder about sales. And I get all that. But my my thing is... My man, and, and a lot of you guys don't care. Some of you guys be happy. You have all the Nintendo exclusives now. Nintendo seems to have most of all their teams just making Switch games. Uh, you know, you, you have really, really good indie support because the indie games do phenomenally well on the platform. So, lots of the best indies in the world are coming to Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we are getting some AAA third party games like NBA 2K19 coming out, probably the next Doom, probably the next Wolfenstein, um, that was well, Starlink, Battle for Atlas. Yep, so we're getting some. We're getting a little bit, 
But my thing is, I'm tired of Nintendo platforms, and I'm not taking all the blame off Nintendo. Nintendo scared their parties away a long time ago. Forget forget about the Wii and being lower visuals. Heck, Call of Duty. So forget about that. Forget about Wii U and the tablet. Whatever. Nintendo scared third parties away with their policies back during the 90s mm-hmm. and never recovered from it. And my thing is, Nintendo doesn't have those policies anymore. They're trying to be inclusive. They're advertising third-party games a little bit in their Nintendo Directs anyways. Uh, I wish they would have gave Starlink a little more pub in their Nintendo Direct for E3, but whatever. I guess Ubisoft was just where we were going to get all the hype for that. Um, but I'm, I'm of mind that as a Nintendo fan, and I play on multiple platforms, but as a Nintendo fan, can we stop waiting and begging for scraps off the heap? And can they finally just say Nintendo is a major platform holder in the industry? Let's give them all the games like everyone else gets. Yeah. I'm tired of the excuses. I know things have to be dumbed down. Who cares? Things have to be dumbed down for Doom and Wolfenstein, and I guarantee they're going to sell just fine. Mm-hmm. We literally got a version of FIFA that's an old engine four-year-old game, and it sold so well, we're getting another one. Mm-hmm. Like, we're clearly going to buy the games. We don't care how dumbed down it is. Starlink is probably going to sell best on Switch just because Star Fox is in it. Yeah, there's that. Like, why can't we get Assassin's Creed? Oh, it's made on Anvil 2. Blah, blah, blah. I don't give a crap what it's made on. And yeah. I know games take a while to develop for. Right. These companies have had development kits for three years. Mm-hmm. We're well into development cycles for these games. They could easily be on Switch. Why aren't they? Because they don't want to bring them. They mm-hmm. don't want to put in the effort. They don't want to invest the money. They don't think the audience is there. Which is on a platform weird. that caters to the type of audience they 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 want adults mm-hmm. more than any other platform because adults don't have time to sit in front of a TV. Right. It's just ridiculous to me that we have to beg for scraps off the heat. I hate it. Oh, the passion. It, it makes me so like that. I'm buying Wolfenstein 2. It's fantastic. Yeah. I hope that the fact that I bought Doom and bought Wolfenstein 2 helps convince Bethesda. Are my are my buying of the games gonna convince them of anything? No, we're still not gonna get Rage 2. We're still not gonna get Fallout 76. And someone's gonna say, oh, Fallout 76 is an online game, so so Switch doesn't have an online game. So when is that a problem? Yeah. When when did that become an issue? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, I it, it's just it's ridiculous to me. That's all, that's all I can say. I, I I want to live for the day that basically third parties start treating them like they treated the SNES. We're bringing every game to your platform. Just because it's also going to Genesis doesn't mean we're not going to bring it to the SNES. Mm-hmm. Why can't I mean, we get back to that? I we're mean, in the midst of a I, platform that's probably going to sell 100 million units and we still can't get third party support. Equal third party support. I mean, I'm not like like a specialist in this so no one go out there and say mark greenberg said this so this is totally gonna happen <laughs> well you but did say I, this well, whatever yeah. you're about to say well, i did but i'm just not saying it's like 100 percent gonna happen <laughs> what i'm what i would say is the two like what i think is gonna happen is two ways i think that one we're just not gonna get equal treatment and we might get like two or three games a year or i think that we're gonna get a game like call of duty which is just gonna be like, well, you know what? We'll give Switch a shot for something like big like Call of Duty. It sells well, and other third parties decide, okay, I think we're gonna come to this. But I think there has to be one game like a like an Elder Scrolls, which is gonna be way far away, so it's not gonna be that. Like a Fallout, like uh, like I don't really think one game Duty, like around. a Battlefield that comes to the Switch and sells a ton, and it's a huge mult, and it's a huge game. And it sells well, and it's uh, online, and I think that's what'll get people to come because those are some of the biggest games right now. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't like. Here's the thing: the biggest game in the world, Fortnite, it's already a success. If that's not convincing people, then what? Will? Yeah, right. But Nate, Fortnite is free. It doesn't Fortnite. matter. It doesn't matter. Fortnite's free. It's an mm-hmm. online exclusive game, most popular game in the world. It's blowing up on Switch, which means there's players that want to play those online games on Switch. Mm-hmm. All, all it's telling you is, look, there's an audience that actually plays online on Switch. A huge there is, it one. Several millions of them. But it doesn't tell us how much money that audience is willing to spend because I just, at the end of the day, if I'm a developer and I'm looking at something, Fortnite, I would rather look at a Call of Duty, a Battlefield, something like that over a Fortnite because sure. Fortnite's free. And so I don't get actual yeah. buying stats. I just yeah. get people downloading it. Yeah. But it's free. You, 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 know, you know where they get those numbers from? The attach rate of Switch to games. Mm-hmm. The attach rate of Switch to games right now is 12 to 1. 
12 games for every one Switch. That is higher than PlayStation 4 and Xbox. Mm -hmm. They're there. We're buying games. We're literally buying games. Every game that is released on this platform that has been of a AAA quality has performed well. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been one failure yet. So it's like, what more proof do they need? We're we're a year and a half in, and we're buying the games. We're buying. I'm buying Wolf Set Two. You're buying Wolf Set Two. I'm sure. I'm sure. Probably five hundred thousand to a million other people are buying Wolf Set Two as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the biggest failures of this system was Arms, and Arms wasn't even a failure. Arms wasn't a failure. They're still supporting it to this day, and they said they're making an Arms Two. That's not a failure. Arms just didn't. Arms just didn't sell like Splatoon, but Arms. Arms was some people called it a failure. It's so low. Arms still sold million, two million units. Arms so, sold. Arms sold as well as the recent Street Fighter game, and that yeah. was counting sales on all platforms. Fighting so, games don't have a huge audience, right? So people yeah. that people that looked at it as a failure don't I, understand fighting. It's. Games. I think they just looked at. The I mean, maybe they just looked at Smash, pure numbers. Smash is not a normal fighting. They, game. they looked at it as pure numbers instead yeah. of. Instead oh, it's of not as big as the reason it's not why. Be. There's it a lot did. more people that like shooters than like fighting games, mm-hmm. like. It's not. It's not comparable, right? Yeah, but like, even even though it wasn't technically a failure, it did. did we lose him? I don't know. Did we lose Mark? Not one hundred percent sure. Mark was about to go off too. Yeah, he had a big rant coming. Well, we'll see if uh, we'll see if Mark guy uh, comes back with us here. Uh, Hopefully, you want to bring up the next topic, and we'll we'll return to this if Mark reconnects here. Do we lose him? No? We're still, we're still connected. He might, doesn't mean he's actually there. Oh. Am I reconnected? Oh, there, there you go. Is. Now he's back. What were you saying, Mark? Okay. So what I was saying was I just think that when you, we're going and we're seeing these games and the lowest of low games are selling a million, two million units. So when you're looking at an upside and a downside, I'm not asking you to bring this port at – and ha- even have a 60 FPS option. I'm not asking it to be stay at 30 and not do- drop down to things like 25, 24s, and above. Nothing in the teens, but d- around like the 25. Yeah, playable. Ish, playable. Would be playable, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And those games, because you're already developing the game, it, if you look at it and you say, okay, we're either going to break even or make money if we sell a million, a million of these then you should just automatically bring it. And that's a ton of games. I understand there are some games that are so advanced it might not be worth it, and that's kind of a risk. But there are so many games that could come here, and they'd have like a 99% chance of breaking even. And mm-hmm. if you break even, nothing gains, nothing lost, and you just tested it out. So what's the big deal? Why can't you just test it out and see what happens? Businesses are in the business to break even. Yeah, that's the it, thing. That's the thing. They want all the money. They don't like the reason we don't get EA games isn't because they don't think they can break even or make a little bit of money on Switch. They probably heck FIFA proved they could they, they can make a decent chunk of money. They don't want a decent chunk. They want like seven thousand percent profit margins. Yeah, because that's what they get on the other platforms. There's no guarantee they'll get that on Switch. Because there's no guarantee they're gonna have enough people that buy the game for it. Mm-hmm. Let alone that enough of those people are gonna buy the microtransactions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I understand. It's ridiculous, by the way, because if you know you're going to make profits at all, you figure it should be worthwhile because making money is better than not making money. Mm-hmm. Like you're leaving, but you're basically, and that's the thing. Like EA and even like Bethesda with Rage Two and stuff, you're basically looking at your investors and saying, like, yeah, we know we would make some profits on Switch, but we're just going to leave that money on the table. Right. Like, I, the investors are going to be fine. Obviously, the investors usually have money. And they're still getting nice dividends, and EA is still a massively profitable company. So is Bethesda. So is, like, they're not going to question why companies aren't bringing certain games to Switch because they're still as long as they get their money, that's all they care about. But oh, man, like I like you're even talking about like test the market. Like stop testing the market. Yeah, Skyrim sold yeah. well. Doom sold yeah. well. How many more games need to sell well before you start uh, realizing we're going to buy the damn at games? What, at what point in time is it? They're bringing not- NBA 2K19 day and date this year, yeah. physical version two. They they screwed us last year by delaying the physical right. version a month, and it still sold so well. They're bringing NBA. At, at what point in time is it not like, testing the oh. market and just pure laziness? It's not even. It, it, it's Nintendo soured relationships, mm-hmm. and so they just don't give a crap. They make enough money in the platforms they're already on. They're not want to deal with Nintendo. Yeah, and that's why I said in one of my recent videos that Nintendo 
unfortunately has to go above and beyond if they're ever going to get third parties back in the fold yeah. full gear like square enix they're like yeah we're gonna we're gonna bring you uh a bunch, you know like, Pro- like project octopath traveler we're gonna do a bunch of games like that exclusively for switch that's great project octopath traveler is phenomenal the new demo is phenomenal everything about that game is phenomenal mm-hmm. i'd still rather have kingdom hearts 3 mm-hmm I'd still rather have Final Fantasy 15 and Final Fantasy 14, which they might be doing. I'd still rather have Dragon Quest 11 here. Enough of the excuses about how, oh, we're waiting for an update of Unreal Engine 4 on Switch. Screw that. Yeah. You've had you've had over a year. Mm-hmm. Stop waiting. Just get it done. Yeah. But they don't care. They're, they're just waiting because it'll be cheaper if somebody else does the work for them. Yep. And that's why I said, like, Nintendo. Nintendo wants EA games to have to contact EA and say, we will pay to to port over your mm-hmm. engine to switch mm-hmm. we we will literally pay your developers to port over the engine they offer that we're going to start getting every ea game under the sun because all ea games are made with that engine right they port over frostbite we suddenly get every game made, made on frostbite that's what will happen mm-hmm. or or if it's not heck nintendo oh, might have to go a step further they might have to be like, not only will we pay to port the engine we will pay to start a team in within your company, there's only job is to port games to Switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. but that's the thing. Nintendo's not going to do that. They're going to feel like they don't need to do that. Uh, and but that's the kind of thing. And Nintendo has to go, and that is beyond what everyone else is doing. Everyone else is just offering marketing deals. They're not paying for these companies to make the games. They're just saying you can only, and all your marketing has to just like put Xbox at the front of the marketing. Like when we are when we're at E3, we're the only ones that could talk about it. Like that's the way it was with Dark Souls too. Nintendo just did it with Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, that backfired in their face. Mm-hmm. Should it have backfired in their face? I don't know why. What like my thing is, it must not have been that great of a marketing deal because if it was, every version would have been delayed for Switch. Mm-hmm. And you could say, oh, that pisses off other gamers. Doesn't matter. Nintendo has the marketing deal. Mm-hmm. They're the ones paying for this game to be marketed. If that version's not ready, none of the versions right, come. Right, that's just it. Treat Switch I mean, equally. Instead, you're like, no, we're going to bring out the other version and say, yeah, the Switch version, everyone who has played it says it works, says it's great, but we're delaying it anyways and we're not telling you why. I mean, I almost want to see, I almost want to see, I almost want to see I a gamer to at least be put on the board or even president and find a a gamer who's going to lead y'all to say, what do the gamers want and where can we take? this that'll bring it that'll rise it above where we can take it as a company and bring it to the gamers and show the gamers that we want what they want and they want what we have and that'll get get us sales and i think if they would do that i think it'd go a long way but i don't think that's nintendo's business style i think the other way it's happening is if this next generation everyone flops with nintendo and i don't want that to happen (laughs) so i it's just a very frustrating time to live in um, because I'm not sure what else Nintendo can do besides literally throwing money around like crazy. And they have the money to do it, but they're not going to. They're a Japanese company. They just don't do that. Heck, even throwing Square Enix some money, they'd be like, yeah, okay, enough of the excuses. Here's the money you need to make it happen. It's just not going to happen. Um, I mean, oh, it's just so, it makes me so it, – it's just – it's – I here's the thing, guys. I game on multiple platforms, so I'm not even saying I can't play these games. You know, Mark just said he bought a, he bought a PlayStation Four. Like, we have access to these games, so we're not talking from the aspect of we can't play these games because it's not on the platform we own. We own platforms to play these games on. That's not the problem. The problem is that in general, when at least me as a consumer, when I am investing in things, I like having all of my games as much on one platform as I can, and the reason I want that platform to be Switch is because of that portability that nothing else offers me. And they're not giving it to us, even though Nintendo hasn't... I mean, I'm not saying Nintendo's, Nintendo's not perfect. They're not. We don't have achievements yet. I know a lot of companies care about achievements. We don't have a universal achievement system. They're getting into paid online accounts that don't seem to be offering us anything but some classic games. They don't really seem like it's offered any improvements over what we have now. That kind of sucks. I mean- in that case, then I got a question for both you and Eric, and that is, how would you feel if Nintendo was like, screw the Switch, and they ditched it, and they went, and they tried to compete in the exact same market as the PlayStation work. and the uh, Xbox? Wouldn't work. They would get destroyed. They would get destroyed. 
Um, Microsoft definitely would stop supporting them with Minecraft because uh, now they're direct competitors. And Nintendo does not excel when they try to compete head-to-head, as saw with the GameCube. GameCube is more powerful than PlayStation 2. doesn't matter. Nintendo's going to Nintendo. They're not going to just do what everyone else is doing. They have sta- stated that themselves. They've actually never really done what everyone else is doing. Like Back when they competed with power, people forget, yeah, they competed with power, and they were doing something that no one else was doing. N64 competed with power, but we were still using cartridges, and they touted the faster load times, whereas Sony was touting the higher data rates and the better sound quality, and then eventually the fact that you could play you know, music CDs. Uh, and then... Uh, you know, with, with GameCube, hey, we're more powerful, yeah, but it's really hard to compress data onto a mini disc because you actually hold less data than on a PlayStation 2, so it's just easier to put games on PlayStation 2. It, like, Nintendo's always said that, yeah, we're competing with power, but what? Uh, Wii U, same as a, a, a 360 and PlayStation 3, but we had to throw in a tablet. Uh, it, like, Nintendo can't help themselves. They're, and, and even if, even if all Nintendo did in this next generation is be like, look, this is a PlayStation 5 with a Nintendo logo which would make a lot of people happy because a lot of people that, that want Nintendo to go back to traditional consoles, they're still not going to win because Microsoft's going to have the more powerful box. Sony's going to have all the high-quality, high-end fidelity exclusives that look really good on that kind of hardware, and Nintendo's just throwing out another Mario, Zelda, Xenoblade, Pokemon that doesn't look even remotely close to like it needs that kind of power. So Nintendo doesn't have the games to compete with a power game. And third parties are not going to look at Nintendo and be like, oh, look, so we have three consoles that do the same thing. Well, who's going to be the odd man out in that race? Probably Nintendo because they don't have the, they don't have the chops. Where does Nintendo accelerate? Why is Switch doing well? It's portable. Hmm. Nintendo has never not made a high-quality, high-selling portable device. The 3DS is their worst-selling handheld of all time, and it moved over $70 million. Hmm. Like, Nintendo's, they, they got portable right. They know what they're doing with portable. And now they're making home console games portable. So it's kind of like, I, 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 like, it doesn't matter. They can't make a traditional box. It, it, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. It didn't work before. It's not going to work now. It might make a few people happy, and maybe we get a few more games ported. But I, I just don't think, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if anything can ever be done. I, I think I have to resign myself to the fact, and it's not just Switch. It's just Nintendo. It's never going to get AAA third-party support full. Equal treatment, no matter what. I don't know what your thumbs up in me for, but... Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's no matter what. I think it's money. Everything's money. Welcome to business. Sure. It's just money, and I think that if Nintendo can put enough money in over X amount of time, because it's not going to all happen at once, it's just how the world works, they might be able to get it back, but it would probably be in the Switch, too, and... Really, what concerns me is you're talking about how Xbox might go 4K, 120 FPS, and they're already 4K, is... so they're definitely well, going 4K. Yeah, but like they're already 4K, and PS4, I'm sure they're going to jump up to 4K and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, how on earth are you going to compete with ports like that on a por- thing, something that can go portable? And I just think that that's what's gonna, what's killing what's kind of killing Nintendo is that. Things like Cyberpunk 2077 are going to be huge. Some of the biggest sure. games. And Nintendo has zero chance of getting that uh, port onto their system unless they can hit because something or like 1080, 60. No, they don't. Why does that game need 1080p and 60 FPS? I mean, that's what I want. I'm not saying I don't want that, but I'm, why does it need it? What's wrong with 720 and 30? I mean, what, what's I wrong with just, 640 or whatever, 580 that we played Doom at? Was fine. I mean, I don't think that there's something wrong with it. I just think at the end of the day that the developers of games like Cyberpunk, mm-hmm. they are very proud of their games. And this is something you notice with sure, chefs, sure. with, with no. developers, with people who make stuff. They're always, a lot of them are very proud of what they do and they don't want to make it uh, diminish it. And I feel like they would not, a lot of co- a lot of companies like that would not be willing to put their game at 720p because it would make Cyberpunk 77, 2077 look so much worse than it does. I don't think it would make it look worse at all. With the size of the screen. Because the size, size of the screen. screen. Size of the screen of the pixel density would actually end up being almost equal. Mm. Like that, the, it's, like when you, it's like when someone holds up a, a screen that's AMOLED 1080p with a phone, and then you hold up an AMOLED 4K screen next to it, and you play the same video in each one. You ain't going to tell the difference. The pixels are too small. 
Like, like that's what that's what's so great about like Doom. Like you'll have people complain, oh, it drops down to sub HD. Tell me where it drops down, because you can't tell. Mm-hmm. The pixel density is so small that it, it, at that size of a screen, it really doesn't matter that it's not 1080p. Like I want it to be 1080p. Don't get me wrong. Right. I I'm a tech guy. I will notice the difference. But the difference isn't something that I feel like developers are going to look at and be like, man, this is the crappy looking version of the game. Now, if, now if you were to put the 1080p next to a 4K on the same size screen. Sure, sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like Xbox One X and the docked Switch, you're going to notice the difference. Yeah. Like that's just the way it is. But uh, I think a lot of, and this is my thing too with the industry in general, not everything needs to be about visual fidelity. Right. Who cares about 4K? Is your game like, I love 4K. I love 60 plus FPS. I have a PC that does that. I have a 4K gaming TV out in my, out in my man cave. Like, I, I get it. Mm-hmm. It's phenomenal. It's great. But that's not why I play games. Mm-hmm. It's great to have it if it's possible, but I don't really care if, it, if it's in 4K or not. I care that the game is good. Mm-hmm. You can give me all the FPS and all of the resolution in the world. That doesn't if make your game, game good. Crap, now, granted, Cyberpunk 2077 looks phenomenal, <laughs> but it doesn't just look phenomenal because it looks beautiful. It looks phenomenal because it looks like a really damn fun game. Yeah. And CD Projekt Red makes really damn fun games. So it, it, it's just... It's just counterintuitive argument where as an artist i understand where an artist like who mm-hmm. made all these assets doesn't want to see dumbed down versions of their assets i i get that and i get that a lot of companies might treat gaming as an art but it's also one of those things where gaming's about playing games mm-hmm. and if you can make a portal if you if you go into cyber like the cd project red and you're like hey uh nintendo went in and be like hey look we're gonna give you three million dollars we want you to attempt to get this game to run on Switch. Just attempt. Because it's only $3 million. You know, that might not even cost full porting. I, I don't even know what it would take. But just just say we're going to call it an initial attempt mm-hmm. cost to port the game over. Which, $3 million, Nintendo wipes their butt with that stuff. It's nothing. Um, so they, they would go in and, and they, they do it. I guarantee you, if they can get the game to run, even at like 20 FPS, you know, they'd have to do a lot, more, a lot of optimization. If they get to run at 20 FPS, they're going to be impressed. They're going to be impressed with themselves. They're gonna look at it on the screen and be like, "That doesn't actually look that bad." Mm-hmm. If you if you could like, I'm, and here's the thing, I get that there's technological limitations. Obviously, um, ideally there isn't, but th- there's going to be. There, there's always going to be sacrifices made to make games portable. That's just the way it's going to be. But the people that own the system don't seem to care about those sacrifices, and we buy the games anyways. But Nate, the people that own the system aren't the people making it or designing it and it feels like gaming is about 4k and how much stuff is sold 4k 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 Mm -hmm. it's everywhere 4k tvs 4k um xbox one x a lot of people consider it better than the ps4 pro because it's better graphics even though the exclusives are nowhere near as good let's be honest sure but at the end of the day there's oh. this huge deal made out of 4k 4k is just a marketing term it's mm-hmm. to get people a, to buy things exactly mm-hmm. but and but so works. and 1080p is would be used if we if they could get cyberpunk like that i don't personally i like i haven't i've been a nintendo fan for the past 10 years sure. i haven't like fall and then i it, played some game boy like but like i wasn't like a, the biggest nintendo fan yeah. growing up i was i i that's more recent however i still played their stuff yep. but what i know notice in the gaming community is that a lot of gamers like 4k and 1080p and they buy sure. for it even if they don't actually know what it means or don't know what it is they see oh a lot of other people like that so we're gonna like it too sure. and so i think that even and so i think that that developers look at that and they're seeing that and it's just almost a choice of Maybe I can get this to run, but I don't want to. Or well, whatever well where, where's the, but the, the counter argument to it is then what about the 100 million people that are about to buy Switch because they just want gaming on the go? They want console games on the go. So so why why are they paying attention to the smaller market versus the larger market is what I'm saying. Because 4K penetration right now really only exists in the United States, and even then it's on less than 5% of TVs and homes. So 4K penetration is dinky. It's like smaller all re- like like the amount of people that own a PlayStation 4 Pro and an Xbox One X is a smaller percentage of total gamers than own a Switch currently. And Switch is going to keep growing. Whereas, you know, yeah, the obviously people that buy PlayStation 5 and Xbox will just have 4K capabilities, but most of them won't even be playing in 4K because they don't own the TVs to play in 4K. Mm-hmm. 
So, like, the thing is, you're making this argument about following the trends of gamers, so why are they ignoring the trend of gamers massively showing in droves, adults that have money in droves, showing we care less about 4K, we care more about taking our games anywhere we want. It's not necessarily following the trends in gaming. It's following the trends in technology. Sure. It's, it's And the trends in technology is portable. They're ignoring the games. They're going technology. I mean, I give that my props sense? to y'all. I think that's a great counter argument, and I really don't know how to argue it with. Yeah, the well, I mean, no, I I'm I'm glad you're bringing up the argument. You are like, I'm not trying to make but, you feel yeah, like that. Right, it, right, it, right. It's more so like, but this is, there there is two different trends. Yeah. There's the like 4K is the high end. Mm-hmm. The high end is always smaller sure. than the low end, mm-hmm. and the low end but is I, people who want to take things everywhere. There's a reason smartphones are in billions of homes. Mm-hmm. From what I have experienced, I feel like that what I'm telling you is what the developers are thinking oh no definitely and the developers don't have a nate jance and <laughs> an eric uh, last name to <laughs> yes. to uh, across the table giving them a counter argument they're just saying they shouldn't you know, they, they, the, should. they have the sales data in front of them switches are they, selling they and people are buying them. games they don't and, and they're and they're just trying and it feels like companies try to find excuses to not have to develop for the switch and i just I don't know. I don't think it. I think that whether or not it is able to come to the Switch, it doesn't matter because it's. I don't think. I think that developers are going to say, you know what, screw that. It's 720p. I don't want to do it. And I just, no matter how many counter arguments on YouTube they see, there have to be a huge shift in the mindset of people, or Nintendo has to pay them one of the two yeah. for it to for games like that to come. No, I I, just, I agree. I mean. I don't disagree in that these games aren't going to come. They're not going to. I, I'm just expressing frustration in we're not going to get portable 4K gaming because battery life is impossible right now. Right now. The battery technology has not advanced in a long time, yeah, it and it needs a massive major overhaul yes, and advancement for us to ever have portable 4K gaming. Mm-hmm. If someone's going to argue about phones, go ahead and play a 4K, a true 4K game that you downloaded on your phone in 4K. Watch your phone be dead in a half hour. Mm-hmm. Unless you're using a battery bank. And even then, watch a battery bank be dead in an hour. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's just the technology is not there to really support it. Now, 4K live streaming of videos and stuff, yes, but that's less intensive. Mm-hmm. You can get a couple hours of that before your phone dies. So, it, it's one of those things where Nintendo's a little bit held back by technology yeah. in, in their portable sense for 4K. And, obviously, under underbox TVs are not, but... It, <laughs> It's weird because everything seems to be like every year we hear about how digital sales growth is growing, digital this is growing, digital that is growing, physical is going down, physical mm-hmm. is going down. So why are we still talking about physical boxes under TVs? Mm-hmm. Like, like Xbox is almost showing, and PlayStation with their streaming service is showing like yeah. that in, in tw- ten years, twenty years, th- these boxes under TVs might not even be a thing that exists anymore. So why are right. we continuing to push towards you know, I'm a medium that might not exist? Kind of surprised, like. Xbox or Sony hasn't tried to partner with like Samsung and build in their systems into the TV. Uh, they have this, certain TVs in China are doing it right now, but it's just China, obviously, well, yeah. where they just do everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But yeah. Uh, it, but I, I'm I'm kind of surprised that that hasn't started to happen yet, though, where huh. the the systems are just built in. Yeah, so it's, it's a little. I mean, it, it might start happening with this next generation. You never know. Maybe they start saying, "Hey, look." Sony, we're bringing back our Sony TVs, and we're putting PlayStation 5 in it, inside every TV. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, Sony's got their own TV brand. Yeah. Do they even still make TVs? I don't even remember. Yeah. Did they sell yeah. off their TV brand? Or they still have they might have, but even then, I it's know still they got the Sony name on it. <laughs> I'm sure that it's going to be real hard to twist the arm of whoever the heck they, if they did sell it off. To, <laughs> Who owns to the put, rights? But yeah. yeah. It, it, I don't know. It's a, I, I'm just a, of, of the mindset of... People just care about playing games the way that they want to play them. Mm-hmm. More so, like the people I, who care about 4K and you, the people you see you root the, out the there problem. are such a such a small minority. But the of problem people. is, is they're loud. Sure, but the minority's always loud. Yeah, that's why the majority. Yeah. That's why you, that, that's why I keep saying like like when Mark was saying, oh, they don't have a Nate Jance across the table talking to them. They don't need me. The numbers are right. I'm just regurgitating publicly known numbers. Numbers that Nintendo themselves have put out there. Nintendo themselves have put out that 92% of Switch owners are adults. Mm-hmm. That's that's out of Nintendo's mouth. That ain't me. Mm-hmm. That's their own stats are telling you a majority of people, like, like people say, oh, Switch is for kids. Not according to Nintendo. Mm-hmm. 
According, to, why do you think the attachment rate on games is so high? Because it's people who have money mm. that oh, own yeah, it. No, no, definitely. <laughs> Why do you think the attachment rate is so low on Xbox? Because it's kids and teenagers that don't have money. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it, it's crazy to me that this that this is even a conversation. Like, the stats are out there. I'm not I'm not telling them anything that, that they can't already know. Maybe they choose to ignore it. Maybe they just don't want to know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think a lot of it is that Nintendo soured relationships, and just because of that, EA and everyone else just doesn't care what Nintendo. Nintendo mm-hmm. could have Nintendo could have a billion. So that they could be an iPhone, billion mm-hmm. sales, doesn't matter. They're still not going to get Cyberpunk 2077 or Rage 2. And investors might look at them like, "Are you idiots?" With a billion out there, even if you only only sell 10 million on that system out of a billion, that's a really small amount. That's way the hell higher than on everyone else's system. Mm-hmm. They don't care. Um, and I think it's okay, by the way, for certain games to always cater to the higher end. I'm not arguing like. Like the, there can't be games that don't come to Switch because they're only built for the highest of high end stuff. There are games like that on PC that are not on home consoles because they are built for the highest of high end stuff. I get that those games are should be and, and should be encouraged to exist, but that is not the norm. We're talking about multi platform games that, in general, like when Madden comes out on PC this year, I guarantee you the lowest of the low settings on that will be worse than what it could run on Switch. Mm-hmm. So it won't be a matter of if Switch is more is powerful enough. It's a matter of they just don't want to do it. Like I know Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven is kind of an outlier, but I guarantee the lowest of low settings on PC for it will look worse than Switch games. So it's not a matter of if it can do it; it's if they want to. Mm-hmm. So if they're willing to let and- it run at these lowest of like like The Witcher three, they're really proud of The Witcher three. Go ahead and put all all the settings on low on Witcher three on PC. They allow that to exist. They mm-hmm. obviously don't care that people play it on, on crap PCs. So, but it's PC. Oh, but yes, it's PC. You know, who cares if they, who cares if they're using seven twenty p? My, they they actually did you know The Witcher Three can run at four eighty? Mm-hmm. Runs a sub sub HD on PC. Why is it a problem for Switch? Like, it's it's all a mentality, mm-hmm. and Nintendo's not going to throw around the money because they I don't know if they're too proud or if it's just a Japanese. It can't just be a because Sony throws around money. So I mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Like why? Why is near? Why is near yeah. coming to Xbox and not Switch? Yeah. It would sell way better on Switch than it's going to sell on Xbox. We have proven on Switch we buy Japanese RPGs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one thing that I just want to say before you end up moving on to another topic. Yep. Mm-hmm. I just want to say uh, about kids. I don't think that the with the new media and with the online media, I don't think that kids. Uh, being a child and an adult even matters as much in gaming anymore because I have a nine year old uh brother and who he like he plays mature games, he'll play sure. Doom. Uh mm-hmm. and like he comes home and he's uh and like uh a friend taught him about the birds and the bees and <laughs> like and I'm trying not to say it, stuff. It, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. This no, no. is a video, Thunder Prime, you're fine. Like, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. But like basically what about sex, I would folks. Say is sex. that kids doesn't even matter anymore. It's a kids console. Kids right now is like six and under. Mm-hmm. If you're like seven, eight, nine, ten, you will be you could, will be playing the Call of Duty, the you Fortnite, shouldn't be. the PUBG. You shouldn't be. Shouldn't be but that, that's a, that's bad matter. parenting. They should not be. But they that's all, the thing. Like I know they are. They were when I was a kid too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were playing it when I was a kid. Doesn't mean they, should they be. shouldn't be. I but, I didn't and, touch Call of Duty until I was like fifteen. I think at that yeah, point it's fine. When you're old enough to have a job, you're old enough to play whatever the hell you want. Yeah, but Nate, what parents actually? I'm not saying that it's not bad parenting. It's not good parenting. What I'm saying is with the internet, because I, I don't want to critique parents, and I think that it's all with individual kids. Sure. But what I would, but yeah, what well, I would yeah. say is with the internet, mm-hmm. there, are, there. If my, uh, my, the nine year olds. They can look up. They they know how to use the internet at a very young age, and so mm-hmm. this night my that my nine year old brother he could easily go on YouTube, search up Doom playthrough, and just watch that, and mm-hmm. like no one would know, but he'd still be doing it. And so know. I just think that he shouldn't, but he he does. They will. That's what young kids. I know. Do. Well, this is what I'm saying, and and I get yeah. what you're saying. Like, not every parent's gonna be like me. I know what my kids are doing on the internet at all times, and everything's blocked. Yeah. They can't. They like if they if they search porn in a browser, they're just gonna get an X that shows up on their screen, because I literally know everything going on at all time and control every device that's on my network, mm-hmm. and I have direct access to it from my phone and it pings me every time a new device connects and tells me everything that device is doing when it's on my internet network. 
need a lot of parents. Aren't, well, I know a lot of parents aren't like that. Like, yeah. they don't. Not yes. even that. They don't even know how. But but but, but that that that's that's my thing. Don't let your kids yeah. use the internet if you don't know how to control the internet. I mean, that's I mean that's true. But at some point, you can't go to like a thirteen-year-old. That's about the time people are getting phones now, and be like, "Sorry, you can't have a phone because I don't know how to do this." Or I just yeah, I you can. We, uh, we should, Sorry, we I didn't have a phone till I was twenty. Yeah. you ain't having a phone, yeah. so you can pay for it yourself. Yeah, I'm just saying, kids now, like, oh, my I know, brother, I know. Well, no, I know what you're not, saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Not my, the point. Yeah. We don't need to get into a parenting discussion. No, right no, no. Just, uh, my my thing, saying, my thing is, my yeah. thing is when like and I saw this when I was a kid too, and I saw when I saw other kids playing M-rated games and I wasn't. I kept looking yeah. at it as do your parents know that games only for adults. No, they don't. No, probably. they don't look no. at ratings. Yeah, it's funny. Parents will pay attention to ratings on movies. Yeah. Oh, you can't watch a rated R movie, but you can play this adult only game. Yeah, right. That has oh, sex yeah. and tits in it. But because like, your friend plays it, so it must be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like their the parent the thinks day, it's okay. Like, no, their parent doesn't know. No. Yeah. At the end of the day, the point I'm trying to make is for games, even it uh on Xbox, they have these they're selling games like Fallout and Skyrim and all these sure. mature games. And so what I say is that a lot of kids do buy those mature games, so I don't think it matters. The kids don't buy them, the parents do. See that, that that's the, the point I'm saying. Do. But well, the, the whole my whole point with the Switch is that the people that have the money own the Switch. They, I let my kids play on my Switch, but it's my Switch, my money, my games I buy. Mm-hmm. Like kids aren't buying games because they don't have a job. The parents are buying it. So a system that caters to the people who have the money should get the games those people want to play. That that's my entire argument is that adults primarily own Switch. Adults have money. These games are meant for adults. Yes, I realize a bunch of kids have it, but you know what kids want now? There's a lot of kids wanting to switch because their parents have it. Mm-hmm. It's now the cool thing. Which is weird because normally with something your parents have is uncool. No, I, that was never yeah. true of video game systems. Right, that's remember? Right. Actually, yes, My yes, dad yes, was a PC yes, gamer. Right, right, that's yeah. how I became a PC gamer. Right. Like, like with video aspects, games, that's never been true. Yes. There's other things, you know, it's always like, ah, oh, my dad, my parents said that, I don't want to be that. Yeah. But when it came to video games, it was always, oh, yeah, my parents playing it, that's cool, I want to play it. How did I become a gamer? My dad played NES, so I played mm-hmm. NES. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just how, like, my kids didn't even know what a video game was until they saw me playing video games. Like, mm-hmm. that's just how it goes. They get introduced to the video games, usually by someone who's older. If it's not their parents, it's an right. older cousin. Brother, you know, or, or something like that. Or someone at school eventually introduces them. And what are they right. getting introduced to when they're at school? It ain't Xbox. <laughs> they're getting introduced to Switch. Yeah. 3DS. Pokemon. Um, you know, Minecraft on Game phones Boy. or Wait. something. <laughs> um, like, like it, it's one of those things where I, I understand your argument, but that argument, that's just the way it's been forever. Mm-hmm. The parents are still the ones with the money buying the games. So go where the money is. But basically, like the, there's a reason, like even despite this argument, the attachment rate for Xbox games is way lower than it is for Switch for consoles sold. Meaning that for all the arguments out there about the kids, the kids, the kids, it's the adults buying the games, as is being proven by the system that has more adults on it. It's, it's just at the end of the day, we're, it's a it's a pointless argument because we we all know, all three of us sitting here know that Switch is not going to get these games. It's just not going to happen. And we have to be, you know, quote unquote, thankful of the scraps we get off the heap. We have to th- be thankful we're getting right. Dragon Ball Fighters after everyone in the world said Switch can't run it, and now it's running at 1080p 60fps. We have to be thankful that apparently yes. the, it, Switch can run that game. We have to be thankful yeah. that we're getting Wolfenstein 2. It's like, who cares that it uh-huh. came late? You should just be thankful you have it. I'm like, I, I, I should care that it came late because they should have dedicated it to it two years ago hmm. when they had and, the dev kits. And. I just need to, uh, I just need to uh, say this really fast. Yep. Um, I forget who's making it. I think it's Comcast, but whoever's making that Avengers game, <laughs> if I swear that better be on the Switch. It won't. Be. That's <laughs> it won't. But that uh, that's I, mm-hmm. I'm on a podcast. I'm on YouTube. I, I, I gotta get it out there right now. Five hundred hey. people. I'm I, saying it in case the developers watch it. I, I want I'm, that. I'm developer. I'm so. Uh, the, you you have no yeah. idea. Like I'm gonna get blasted in the like my rants yeah. in this are gonna get me so blasted. Oh yeah. All of my sub momentum killed. It, it won't be killed actually, because we only have like 500 people that watch the podcast, so it'll be all good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, move on to our next topic. Uh, another kind of weird one. Um, Netflix. So Hulu has been on Switch in the United States for a while. Uh, Crunchyroll and other stuffs on Switch in other countries. It isn't for some reason here. Don't know why. 
Uh, but what's kind of universal is no one really has Netflix. Thank you for saying that. Now I'm going to go back and take a look to see if uh, some other things are out oh, that I used to watch. You Crunchy forgot Roll. about Crunchyroll? So, yeah. Hey. Uh, so, so Netflix really isn't out anywhere. And last year, Netflix basically said, we're good to go. We're waiting on Nintendo. Reggie, at E3 this year, was asked about ne- why Netflix is not Switch, and here's what he said. Right now, we enable Hulu on the platform. We said that other services will come in due time. For us, we wanted to make sure that c- that we continue driving the install base for Nintendo Switch, continue to have great games for the platform. In terms of what's next on the streaming sign, you're going to have to talk to those individual providers in terms of where they stand and what they're working on. So basically, Netflix hey, said, this we're is, waiting on Nintendo. Nintendo saying, talk to Netflix. This is, this is code for... Hulu paid us money, and we're going to give them timed exclusive. I don't even think it's that at this point. I think this is code for they're at a standoff in contract negotiations. There's that, too. And they're just blaming each other. Yeah. Because Hulu said back in January, we're still in talks with Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Hulu can... They don't even have to make the app. It's it's on NVIDIA Shield. Mm-hmm. It, it's on, like It's done. It's been done. It's been done before Switch even came out. Mm-hmm. It's not a question of if if Netflix can be on on Switch. That's never. I mean, it's not 3DS for crying out loud. <laughs> okay, literally, this isn't taking years for them to develop the app. This is a contract negotiation thing mm-hmm. because Netflix is a subscription service, and Nintendo is with their paid online everything going on. Nintendo's probably trying to get a slice of the subscription service mm-hmm. business, and Netflix is probably arguing, no, you can't because this is a multi-platform thing. Mm-hmm. People aren't necessarily buying Netflix through your eShop. Yeah. They paid for it on PC, and we want to run it through your system, just like Hulu. Yeah. So and, uh, I I, I, I don't understand. I don't know. I don't know who to be mad at, because we don't know what's going on. All we know is there there is a standoff. It's like a Mexican standoff, and we don't know what the hell's going on. I mean, if I had to guess, because Hulu didn't have this problem, and if I had to guess what the problem could be. It might not even be like we want a piece of the money that's being sure. spent for people. I, I always Netflix. assume money because that's usually the problem. Yeah. <laughs> what I think it might be is with our uh, or Nintendo's online service that's coming out, I think that Nintendo might want to require you to have the online service to use Netflix. And Netflix mm-hmm. might want to be like they're already paying for the subscription. They don't need to have online mm-hmm. to also use it. And I think I feel like that's kind of a stupid argument so it's money. because mm-hmm. because that is, but like Just a different I money think argument. that could be it because that's because it is on the 3ds and so you'd think since it's on the 3ds can it not come to the Switch with like the same terms and I think that's the difference between the 3ds and the Switch and so that might be have something to do with it. No, I mean, maybe I mean it used to be it idea. used to be behind the paywalls on Sony and Microsoft too. So I'm not sure Netflix has an issue with it being behind the paywall. Used to be. Well, yeah, but they they stopped doing it because too many consumers were complaining. So now, so I don't know if they were just unsubscribing. It, but that's the thing. What? Now they might have a problem with well, it. I mean, the, because... the big thing is the big thing in all this is unless it's behind the paywall, what's the benefit to Nintendo? Like, what is Nintendo benefit of having Netflix on 3ds that you turn your 3ds on more? It doesn't make them more money. Mm-hmm. And no one's gonna buy a Switch to watch Netflix. It's just. No one really buys anything to watch Netflix. It's just on everything. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it. You buy a TV today, it has Netflix. So, yeah, you know, it, it's... I, I just don't know what this standoff could be about. And it's not just Netflix. The focus is on Netflix. Where's YouTube? Yeah. Yep. Where's any other service that isn't Hulu? Where's internet browsers? Notice how we're getting a paid online system. No internet browser. Mm-hmm. So now I'm paying for online services and I can't really even access online. Mm-hmm. Why? On a tablet, it actually makes more sense for me to use an internet browser on a Switch than any other platform. Yeah. But phones. Yeah. And I I'm, can't because reasons. Even though the browser's there, and I technically can. It's a workaround. I mean, I just think this whole thing's kind of stupid. Oh. It's argument. all stupid. We're not. We're not able to know. We're not going to know. And I think that no, we're never going to know. Whatever Nintendo's doing, Nintendo tries to. I think that this kind of shows that Nintendo is can sometimes be just as anti-consumer <laughs> as Sony, even though they don't want to look yeah, at. The only people being hurt are consumers. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know what the contract negotiation is, but someone needs to give in because consumers yeah. are suffering by the fact that I have to like I have a switch hooked up to my my TV in my office. 
Um, I'm sure other people have their Switch hooked up to TVs in the living room or in the I, rooms or wherever, you know, wherever they keep it docked. And there is a convenience factor, like what Xbox One yeah. was trying to do. There is a convenience factor of not mm-hmm. needing the Switch devices to watch something. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though all of us have access to Netflix and a zillion other ways, mm-hmm. my TV has Netflix on it. I don't have to use the Switch. It is super convenient to switch between games. Like I, I, I have Hulu on my TV, but I still watch Hulu on my on my Switch on my TV over using the Hulu on my TV. Because mm-hmm. it's just so quick for me to swap between games and Hulu. Switch is already booted up. It's mm-hmm. super convenient. It's a convenience. Mm-hmm. And you're ruining user convenience. And this isn't even counting people that maybe they have Switch in their bedroom and they just want to set it on their nightstand and, and turn and watch it because they don't want to. They don't. They, I know some people think that's funny. There's a lot of people that are holding phones above their faces and still dropping it on their face <laughs> watching movies. It is funny. Like, all of us have been there that have owned a smart device. Um, and some people have a nightstand and they just want to set their switch. With, they actually want to use the kickstand or Holy something. Holy cow. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, there's and, a kickstand? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a kickstand. <laughs> wait. And, and just watch some Netflix and still be able to use your phone. Like, now you can multitask. Yeah, right? Hey. hey. Um, I, it feels like a hang dang measuring contest. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think there's really anything else to talk about this because we don't know what's going on. No. I just think it's but, funny that Netflix points the fingers at Nintendo. Nintendo points the fingers back at them. Clearly showing that there's a disagreement somewhere and no it, one no one can give in. The, the only thing I'm wondering with, like, YouTube is because there's so many Nintendo videos on YouTube. Oh, yeah, heaven forbid, you know. But Nintendo somebody plays else, ad rev yeah, on Oh, them. right. Exactly. Well, but, you know, heaven forbid if some other platform shows a Nintendo video, you oh, know. Yeah, YouTube's on 3DS too. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Like, uh, I don't. I. Uh, that's why I think it's more on Nintendo than anything because when you're talking about, okay, every streaming platform except for Hulu could get on there. Yeah. Uh, Japanese, uh, Japan's version of YouTube is on there. So, like, what is happening in the United States that Nintendo America is just like, sorry, you can't, and we can't have these streaming services on there. Go ahead and talk to those, as Reggie said, go talk to those providers on why it's not on Switch. Like, um, uh, why, what, are, what are you doing that's sure, different? Pretty sure we did, and it says we're waiting on Nintendo. <laughs> pretty that's sure we did. We don't pretty know sure what YouTube did. is. YouTube oh, well, has yes, but still, responded. but still, even but though. YouTube's got enough issues. <laughs> we're on YouTube right now. They've yeah. got enough issues. Yeah. Um, all right, this last topic really isn't anything other than whatever we want to maybe get in before the end. Mark, do you have anything you'd like to talk about? You are the guest. I mean, I have a couple things I can think of that are just quick. and I, Let's do it. What Go I'd say it. is just a uh, future of Nintendo and uh, probably Sony and Microsoft and I just want to say, next gen. here we go. Uh, and w- not just of uh, this year, I think that you said in the video, and I personally agree with you, we kind of feel like we're having a leap year here, and then we have a huge thing coming on 2019. Yeah, with but Nintendo I, games, for sure. Yeah, but I, yeah. with Nintendo, but I think I want to hear uh, both your thoughts on uh, Sony and Microsoft. Where do, you, where do you think Microsoft goes? Where do you think Sony goes? And because we've kind of touched on a little bit of Microsoft and also for uh, Nintendo wise after 2019, when we get into 2020, 2021, are they going to be, are they going to stick with the switch or are they going to move on to switch Two because they want to keep up with Sony and uh, Xbox. Okay, cool. Uh, Eric, you got any thoughts? Um, I have a lot. So right. Um, for Nintendo wise, I think they're gonna try to hold on to the Switch as long as physically possible. I, 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 you know, whether it's just upgrading, you know, Switch XL, Switch, you know, Mini, Switch, whatever. I think they're gonna try to hold on to this as long as physically possible. Um, Xbox is, I think, gonna go back to the power out. Yeah. Um, that's kind of where I think that's gonna head. Sony's gonna just be Sony and do what it does and hope it, you know, either it's going to take off or crash. It depends on Sony's attitude and how, how it treats its people right now. It looks, you know, not great, but it's, it is what it is. Sony's going to Sony. Yeah. My thing is, is I don't even think it's going to be 2020. I think next year we're getting a switch revision. I don't know if it's switch Two. don't know if it's switch pro switch XL. I don't know what it is, but we're getting a Tegra X2 switch next year. It's just going to happen. I don't know if it's going to be because PlayStation 5 and Xbox 2 might be announced next year or if it's just because this is what Nintendo planned to do. But I look at what what we have to remember here is I know Nintendo calls it a home console, but it's a portable home console. And what have they been doing with portables? It took about three years and two and a half years to three years before we got the new Nintendo 3DS. 
which is a more powerful 3DS. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a more powerful Switch next year. It's happening. It'll be cross-compatible with everything Switch is. Mm. It won't have any exclusive games, at least not from Nintendo's side of things. doesn't mean there won't be third parties that only make games for it. Uh, but I don't know that Nintendo themselves will <laughs> we have... We don't have third-party in making... <laughs> I know. <laughs> Third-parties so, don't make games anyways <laughs> yeah, right, right. for Switch, yeah. so whatever. Assuming yes. that there's someone yes. who's waiting for that more powerful Switch. Um, yeah, now, as for doing it in response to compete with the next generation of the other systems... <laughs> Mobile technology isn't anywhere. The the top end mobile technology in the world can't even compete with the PlayStation Four. No, it, there's nothing they can do with Switch's concept to make it compete with the next generation of systems. There's just nothing out there they can do about that. It's not Nintendo's fault. That's no, just the way mobile technology the is. Yeah. There's nothing they can do about it. So they're not going to be doing it in response to Sony and Microsoft. They're doing it in response to themselves. They caught on to a way to incrementally improve platforms over time, and they're going to keep doing that every two to three years. I think the Switch train is a 10-year journey, mm-hmm. and every three years we're getting a new one. And then we'll see what happens at the end. Because Nintendo said this is going to be longer than a six- or seven-year generation, Mm -hmm. which means probably a decade. They have a decade-long contract with NVIDIA, according to NVIDIA themselves. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get a new Switch every three years. It's going to be almost like the mobile phone market, but only every three years instead of every year. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get a new revision and a new upgrade. And everything's going to be cross-compatible throughout the entire generation until we get to that 10-year mark. And that's when they. Well, it might even be maybe maybe on the maybe on the second revision they might think about dumping the original Switch, in terms of making everything cross compatible with the original Switch. Uh, but again, for people that are panicking, like we're talking like seven years, like seven years of Switch. Mm-hmm. We're talking before they finally say, oh, you should probably buy one of these upgraded Switches. Uh, um, so it's like. Come on. You can't complain you didn't get your full generation out of your Switch at that point. Oh, no, I didn't. Um, Because I know someone's going to be like, no, they can't do that. I'm like, come on, seven years. How much more do you need? That that, that final final three years, I guess? Eight, man. Yeah, seven and a half. Um, One more day. I think that's what they're going to do. It's never going to compete with the latest and greatest in home consoles because it can't. No. Um, Nintendo's going to Nintendo. They have all of their companies making games just on Switch, which means Switch alone is probably going to have the most Nintendo games ever created for a single platform ever by the time it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about from Nintendo first and second party studios because this is the first time in Nintendo's history, literally in their history, that every one of their development teams are only making Switch games. They've always had... They they had NES and Game Boy came out like two years later. So it's been... Nate, before you move on to talk about like um, hmm? uh, things like Xbox and Sony, yeah. what I also want to ask you is I was watching some just uh, Disney Channel with yes. my nice. younger siblings nice. when I was with them. and I, I watched the Disney Channel watching, without my kids here. And I watched it with <laughs> for like – well, yeah, no, my point. My point is uh, – and so, like that, cha- that channel is obviously for younger kids, and that's kind of who was marketed at. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was, we watched about an hour and a half, and in that hour and a half, there were two 3DS commercials sure. that came on. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, all of us gamers are like, 3DS, oh, it's dying, it's, uh, it's dead because, like, they're not showing it anything yeah. maybe three and stuff like that, but. Are they really getting rid of the 3DS? No, because no, they're not. They're Re- Reggie, Reggie said stuff. at E3 that 3DS has already grown by 10% this year. The, I, but what I'm saying is it's not that they're I, getting rid of that platform. Look at the game. Like, you don't need E3. Look at the games that are shift. announced for it. The games that, that they are bringing to it are not like their big studios like they used to be. You're not getting mm-hmm. another Super Mario 3D Land. You're not getting you know, a Luigi's no, it's, Mansion it's Dark a, Moon again. It's a marketing shift. It's going to be more yeah. geared the towards Yeah, Nintendo kids. literally said that it's for little kids. Mm-hmm. So what they're relying on is their legacy content, mm-hmm. and then third parties bringing things like Sweet Laugh of Zack and Cody and whatever. Mm-hmm. Whatever's popular. That's an old, that's Sesame not even popular. Street. Anyway. Whatever. Like, that's what they're relying on. Like, oh, right. look, we're, they're getting Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, they're getting an older version. They're getting the original Luigi's Mansion that looks worse <laughs> on 3DS. Oops. Like, like they got. Oh yeah, great! They got Metroid: Samus it's, Returns. They're not getting a new Metroid game. It, like, the like Nintendo isn't putting any effort into their 3DS content. Right. They're just relying on it's cheap. Mm-hmm. 
We're targeting kids. Mm-hmm. Parents are seeing those kid commercials. Instead they see of, they can get a pl- they can get a two DS for seventy bucks. Yeah, it, it, you don't have to buy them a switch. It's yeah. it's a here's it's got, a, it's got that Pokemon. Yes, here's something that's similar to the switch, yeah. but not you know. I don't even think they're. It's not even a, they're not even associating it with switch. But kids, kids, kids don't even care. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a tablet. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like it's it, it's just a. It, there, it's a system that's going to continue to sell because the price of it is so cheap. Mm-hmm. The marketing is that, and that, and again, that worked towards the Switch's favor. Everyone says, like, I, I still hear even in like Game Stops and stuff, Switches for kids. No, Nintendo is specifically saying 3DS is for kids. Mm-hmm. Like, Switches for adults. They're mm-hmm. trying to differentiate it like mm-hmm. that. Yes, I'm aware, guys. There's commercials with with kids playing it in a family setting because there are family games. We're mm-hmm. having a Mario Party come. Like, there's family yeah, games. Right. It's fine. Like, there's there's also commercials that have kids in it for PlayStation and Xbox. Does that make that a kid console? Oh, well, remember, PlayStation <laughs> is a kid's console because yeah, right. they have to protect them. <laughs> <laughs> you got to protect the children. Um, anyways, I, I think uh, I'm, not, I'm not so worried about that. They're, they're going to drag 3DS along until it's not selling. Like, that's yeah. just what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. They have no reason not to drag it along. It costs them almost nothing to make these days. Mm-hmm. They have a massive library of thousands of games that can continue to sell to kids. All the games are dirt cheap. Parents are always looking for cheap entertainment for their kids. Mm-hmm. It, it's going to survive for another two or three years just off of that. But when I say, like, all of all the, Nintendo for the first time in history is everything working on Switch, because just look at everything working on Switch. They're, they are not announcing any big 3DS games anymore. Mm-hmm. Their biggest 3DS game announcement of the year was Luigi's Mansion, mm-hmm. which is uh, uh, which is great. But it's, a, it, but it's it's a port of a GameCube game that looks worse on 3DS because the kids aren't going to give a crap. No. Yeah, I know we're getting Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. That's great. That's cool. It's a Wii U. It's a Wii U port. It's a Wii U down port technically. <laughs> like, they're not getting like like new big games. There's not another A Link Between Worlds coming to the platform. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're done making major like Pokemon's not here's the thing Pokemon is no longer being made for for 3ds anymore that alone lets you know they're not even making Pokemon games for it anymore they're not making anything mm-hmm. so yeah they'll drag it along until no one buys it but because mm-hmm. they have no reason not to but they, right. it's it's not it's not taking development when we, when, when you say it's dead it's more kind of yeah dead in terms of Nintendo's focus on making games a switch it's yes. not 3ds. 3DS is just marketing kids, mm-hmm. sell as many of these things as we can because they're cheap. Right. Um, now, that being said, I obviously didn't talk much about Xbox and, and PlayStation here. Um, I think Xbox is going to come out firing as we're the most powerful system on the market. Mm-hmm. We're at a competitive price with the next PlayStation. And uh, here's a look at a bunch of exclusive games from all these studios we bought. They're going to try to goodwill it. They're going to try to pull an EA, and they're going to goodwill it um, and they're going to do the best they can with that, and we'll see what happens. I don't know. We haven't seen the games yet, mm-hmm. but I think that's what they're going to try to do. Sony is going to come out, uh, and they're going to say something like, here's PlayStation 5, the successor to, uh, the, most to, to, the, to, the, to the most successful, yeah. highest-selling platform of the last generation. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, they can't forget touting themselves up to oh, sell. Right. They can't sell the system based on its own merits. It has to be based on the prior console. Mm-hmm. I, I just a feel, a gut feeling they're going to use some sort of marketing oh. spin that, that can't oh, yeah. not mention the PlayStation 4. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, they're going to have games. Uh, I think a lot of the games they even show this year, like Ghost of Tsushima, I don't think that's coming to PlayStation 4 at all. I think that's a PlayStation 5 game. But isn't Nintendo Switch technically a last-gen thing? So, like, what... What, what makes it a last-gen thing? Well, like, not last-gen, but, like... Gen. In, uh, when like, PS5 comes out, it'll be Nintendo Switch will be from the the original sure. one at least will be from the last gen. So like, What's if that one, that? like this is just a hypothetical, but mm-hmm. like if that one outsold uh, PS4 afterwards, like but at the I, time it it, it doesn't like, matter it doesn't matter later on the PS5 yeah. is already gonna be taken off and going. It, it's it's yeah. at this point it is the current highest selling current gen yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're not down gonna the, care down the road. Yeah. Who cares? If Nintendo passes them, they dip, they pass them. But yeah, at the time it starts, that's what they can tell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and the big thing is, is PlayStation Five is still going to be fine. Like Sony's worst selling home console, I think, was PlayStation One. Um, 
Like, even PlayStation 3 ended up matching 360, even maybe surpassing it overall by the end of the generation. Mostly because Sony ended the generation very strong. Like, Last of Us, Grand Theft Auto, and I know Grand Theft Auto was multi-plat, but it ran better on PlayStation 3. Um, and, and just, like, are they in they that last, they, uh, those final two years of PlayStation 3 were phenomenal. They, I think they realized they oops in the beginning and had to, well, had, and had to try to push There wasn't even game. a realization. This is what Sony does. So... Yeah. Look at PlayStation 4 and it being called Port Station at the beginning. PlayStation 3 was the same way. Mm-hmm. PlayStation 4 is the same way. PlayStation 5 is going to be the same way. All the best games on PlayStation 5 over the first year to two years are going to be PlayStation 4 ports. Mm-hmm. That's what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, throughout all of this, they'll have E3s where they announce games that aren't coming for two or three years. And then, like, PlayStation 4 is going to have a killer end of a generation. It's going to have Last of Us 2. Heck, maybe Ghost of Tsushima is going to be on there as well. It's probably going to have Shenmue 3. Like, it's all these games that are already announced, maybe they all are PlayStation 4 games. They're going to come on to PlayStation 4, and but they're also going to come to PlayStation 5. Because mm-hmm. that's what they did with PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4. So, like, that's the thing. Sony's going to have momentum. Um, and they're going to do fine. I think PlayStation 5... Uh, it, it's going to move 50, 60 million units. I don't think they're going to have any problem doing that. I just think Xbox is going to bounce back and also move 50 to 60 million units mm-hmm. instead of 30 million um, because they're going to they're gonna take back that market share that, that ran to Sony in the first place because of how poorly Xbox launched themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and the people that, that left them for the more powerful system that costs the same amount, well, guess who's going to have the more powerful system that probably costs the same amount? Mm-hmm. It's going to be Xbox this mm-hmm. time, and Xbox is going to be bringing the games. I have a feeling. And we'll see what happens. I have a feeling that they're going to stay there for a while. I think Sony Sony's going to be fine. Um, the problem Sony has, and this is just a problem with their company in general, is they are very, very reliant on the PlayStation brand right now. Mm-hmm. And it's one thing uh, for Nintendo to be so reliant on how well Switch does or how well this does. Nintendo's in a way better advantageous place than Sony is. They have zero debt. Uh, they have, you know, seven, eight billion dollars in the bank. Uh, and that's not counting any assets that they already have. Mm-hmm. Like they probably have a combined total. Like they probably have ten or eleven billion dollars in just pure asset value. Mm-hmm. Sony doesn't have that. Sony has the PlayStation brand, and then a bunch of failing things they've been trying to sell off. Um, and then some. Then insurance. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also make money off insurance. Uh, I don't know how they make money off insurance, but apparently they it's have a very good. It's of insurance. Course you're going to make money yeah, of off of it because because you, you never pay out. Right. Only everyone pays in, but then you find ways loopholes and not paying you. Oh, exactly. Out. Oh, your house flooded. Well, you technically had flood insurance, but only good for two centimeters of flooding, not, not two inches of flooding. Right. <laughs> or yeah, whatever. It was all metric, not not. Yeah. yeah. Not. They're using the wrong measurements. Yeah. Good luck taking us to court. because yeah. We have all the money, and you yeah. don't. And you sign this contract. Yeah. That you can't get out of and you're stuck in for 10 years. Right. Um, so, <laughs> welcome to insurance. I hate it. Um, it it's I, it's just a, a interesting place Sony's in. It's not like I think Sony's going to do bad or going to fail. They're going to be fine. I don't think they're going to be as successful because I think Xbox is getting some market back. I think uh, Switch is just going to keep doing its own thing because mm-hmm. Nintendo does its own thing, and it's been working for them. Mm-hmm. It's a handheld. It doesn't really compete in the same market. And I know some people are going to come to me, if it doesn't compete in the same market, then why do you want it to get the same games? Well, because Switch's novelty is that it's supposed to be able to get those games and play them on the go. Mm-hmm. That's the novelty factor of Switch. Get rid of those games, and that novelty is just, well, now you play Nintendo games on the go. But we've been playing Nintendo games on the go <laughs> since the 80s. So it's not really a novelty. No. <laughs> it's just now they're it's... even better looking Nintendo games yeah. on the go. It, but the, the thing is... is... For me, Nintendo should be trying to get as many, you know, of these games. Yeah. They're, they should be trying their arse off. And I'm not saying they're I not. I think Nintendo needs to, it, as we talked about before, there's no point in sitting on a massive bankroll if you're not ever willing to spend it. Mm-hmm. What, what's the money going to do it's, sitting in a bank? I mean, accrue interest, I guess. But what, the, what else? Is the idea do? that you're, you're marketing this as, you know, Home console on home and console games the, on the go. My thing is, especially in Japan, I get it. Maybe they're not going to come hard at EA, Bethesda, Ubisoft. Fine, mm-hmm. fine, fine, fine. Why aren't you going hard at Square Enix, Capcom, Konami? Mm-hmm. Why aren't your AAA games coming to Switch? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're getting Mega Man Eleven. That's great. Why aren't we getting Resident Evil Two remake? Why is the only version of Resident Evil on our platform or Resident Evil Seven a streaming version, and it's only in Japan? Why don't we have the real Resident Evil 7? 
Like Nintendo's got the bankroll. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's my kind of my take. Yeah. Uh, did you have something else you want to talk about? Talk about Mark before we head out. I mean, uh, I got one quick thing, but before uh, that, I just need a. Um, I've always wanted to say this word, editor. Editor, editor, editor. editor. Nice. Now, editor, please make sure that every time I say editor, to put the what the text of editor on the screen <laughs> after I say editor, because that's always been one of the better jokes on the podcast. Oh boy, uh, yep. Mr. Editor. Now the, so, que- now the question is, is Martin going to listen to a guest or does he only and, listen to the boss? I don't so, pay him. So yeah, you can listen to whatever you want. Editor, <laughs> I, um, I hope that you can do this for me. Thank you, editor, <laughs> a.k.a. Martin. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, Martin. I feel okay. <laughs> okay. This is fantastic. Martin, you might even get, yeah. you might as well put in the effort because uh, you might might get a week or so off here. I don't know what will happen after surgery or so. Uh, all right. Uh, so what is the other topic you wanted us to talk about? Mark. Did we, did we lose Mark. him again? I think we might have lost him again. Mark, 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 Mark. Hello. Oh, oh back. there it is. Hey. Uh, back. Okay, yeah. there we go. So basically, um, what I'm thinking, I, I know you made a video on it, but uh, for – I'm blanking on their name, the people that made – uh, that we're supposed to make Star Fox Grand Prix. Yeah, Retro Studios. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Retro Studios, thank you. Um, so Retro Studios, like, is it possible that they, like, just, like, Nintendo stopped using them? Because I feel like, or, or just, like, kind of maybe, I mean, I don't know. I just. You're getting suspicious. <laughs> That's what it is. I think I saw your comment on, on my video on? about that. About uh, about something about something about how did they like kind of sort of close the studio but not tell anyone? Is Retro still alive? Yeah, yeah. 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 Like that, like that's the thing. Like it's been so many years. Can we get a like a health check? Yeah, right. Somebody check. Somebody, somebody can can check a, that pulse. Can, can we get a health check? Is Retro Studio still around? Doctor in the house. I mean, they're wait, still hiring people. Hey, wait, wait. They literally have hiring posts out there. Like they're still hiring. So I don't know. Maybe but, they lost a bunch of people and they quit. I don't uh, know. Just because they're hiring doesn't mean they're actually hiring. I could put out posts for hiring if I want to. Doesn't mean I'm actually hiring anybody. Well, we actually know some of the employees that are still there. Oh, so. Okay. okay. So they still yeah. exist. They're still doing something. Somebody- I, I think I think what we have to remember is that there was more rumors associated with Retro heading into E3 than just the Star Fox thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was also another rumor that came about, I think from Kotaku, that Star Fox was not actually the game that they had been working on all this time. They had actually been working on a completely different game, a brand new IP, that wasn't coming together after three years. And they put it on the shelf and then started working on Star Fox. So then they've actually only been working on Star Fox for like a year and a half. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they're making the Star Fox game. It's just not ready. Yeah, I I mean, what I would, like, what, I know this is never going to happen, but what I want is I want Nintendo to give retro uh, the option to do something similar to Cyberpunk because I think that game looks <laughs> incredible, and I think that the uh, Nintendo game, never will. N- yeah. Nintendo never will, but a game that's like it's open world, it's oh, yeah. and it's 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 current in our like current USA or maybe even in Japan or. You mean we we want we want Retro that, Studios to actually make a Western game? What? Yeah. We want that. Yeah, like that's what we want. The problem is, is that it requires Nintendo to spend money. Well, Nintendo doesn't like spending money. I, no. think I know that's the problem. Like, like today. Xenoblade Two is amazing. Then you find out it's made with a team of like fifty people. Mm-hmm. It's like to make one of these like a cyberpunk. Is Nintendo willing to give Retro Studios a three hundred person team? No, no, they ain't doing it. No, they'll um, they'll give Retro Studios twenty people and tell them you have well apparently six years, seven years to make a game. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why not? By that time, you know, Switch Seven might be out. Yeah, I, I mean, but, the, the, there, there's there's a, a benefit to it because Nintendo doesn't hire temporary employees, right? So, like, they hire people they're going to keep on. The, Retro Studios is expanding. They've been hiring. We don't know how many employees they have exactly because we know Nintendo on the whole has 5,000, roughly. Mm-hmm. They put that in the last investors meeting. About 5,000 global employees. That's nothing. 
I think Sony has something like like thirty thousand or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like a company that's worth significant, like less than Nintendo, with no money well, in the bank and a whole bro, bunch of debt, that's has way the hell more probably, employees. That's probably. I mean, why? one. I mean, like <laughs> but, one possibility is like, what if Retro was making a, a Western game and it was just taking so long because Nintendo would only give them a fifty, sixty person workforce. That Nintendo was like, look. That's great. Make it. I don't care. Just give me a Star Fox racing game. Give me something out of you so that we can make money, and then you can go back to your Western game. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's always a hope. I but, think what happened yeah. is that that as the rumor said, whatever game they were working on had a lot of development issues. So, like the the rumor basically stated the game got canned. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it's one of those things where I want to believe. That Star Fox is a stopgap, and then we're going to get some brand new IP in like two years after Star Fox from Retro. Uh, reality is that I don't think that's probably the case. I think it's Retro Studios technically has two teams. They formed two teams like back during the Wii U days, I think, because they were supposed to develop two games simultaneously was the mm-hmm. idea. Um, I don't really know what happened with that. We don't know anything because... I, the one thing that is really weird every E3 is no one is asking Reggie what's up with Retro Studios. Yeah, They ask about Metroid, they ask about Star Fox, but they won't be like, so Retro Studios didn't have a game oh. here again. Are they actually making something? Yeah, No one's asking. like, Because Reggie's going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course they're, they're making say, something. No, they're not making any games. Yeah, they're making something. Like, all, it's like no one's doing a pulse check. I, I don't know. He might tell you to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I don't know that sounds like a better question for Retro Studios yeah. Yeah. we can't get a hold of them they're yeah, not right. here they don't no, show somebody, up anyway. somebody needs to send Dr. Mario over there to take their pulse <laughs> maybe cure a virus or uh, two lo, lo and behold we find out they've just been making Metro Prime 4 the whole time and intend to lie to us that yeah, right. a new team yeah right <laughs> Well, well, it's, I mean, it's a new team. It's a new Retro team Studio. from Retro Studio. <laughs> <laughs> it's that second development team at Retro yeah. Studios we made that's made up of all the people who made Metro Prime 1, 2, 3. Hey, why not? No, I know it's not that because some people who made the Metro Prime stuff already left the company. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, Retro Studios, the, the thing is, is they're basically like Nintendo's Rare. They're their only mm-hmm. Western studio that they wholly own. Uh, they make only games for Nintendo platforms, probably only games for Switch at this point. Uh, every game they have ever made has been excellent. Granted, we, we're just talking about three Metro games and two Donkey Kong games, which isn't very much. No, but but yeah. it. What, what confuses me is that they somehow can't get Retro Studios up to the production level of their Japanese studios. Like even just one of their Japanese studios up puts more games than Retro it's, does. And all those differences it, in communication. Is and part cultures. of it, is it, I was going to say, is part of it because it's a Western studio. And Nintendo's kind of, you know, not not anti-Western, but not as, they are more Japan, and that's what they care about. More sure. than More than Western. It's not that, like I said, it's not that they're anti-Western, it's just they're more. But what does that have to do with the people currently working there making the game? It, they just don't focus on it. They don't give the resources to retro allow retro studios to have the resources as what they would with their J- Japanese developers. What? I'm calling bullshit. I mean, granted, we're just guessing. We don't yeah. really know what the hell's going yeah. on. But I'm still calling bullshit because most of the Nintendo's teams in Japan are smaller than retro studios. The only team. That is actively bigger as the Zelda team. And that's because the Zelda team used to be two teams that got combined into one. Because mm-hmm. they used to make handheld and then home console, but now like, it's just one. Nate. So they have like 100 people making a Zelda game at all times. Versus and, uh, Nate, Retro, which has you... like... Oh, God. Last time I Nate. saw it, it was something like 72 minus new hires and people who have quit over the last couple of years. Nate, if you... If you wanted to go and uh, see your wife, I've you've given us another conversation topic. So, <laughs> wh- <laughs> gotta go here, Mark. How many already got? Uh, th- uh, this is my last one. All right, last okay. one. Here we go. You, you help me, Zelda. Do you think there will be a new, uh, new Zelda kind of like Breath of the Wild coming in the next two years, one year, or do you think that's something for more like 2021, 2022? 
It's coming in 2020. Mm, that's kind of what I was thinking. Next year will be all about the new Pokemon game. Metroid Prime 4. We maybe might even get a, Star Fox. We might get a rematch. Ma- maybe Zelda. even Animal Crossing. 2020 is going to have another Mario and Zelda. Mm-hmm. I'd agree. I would agree. Because the last ones would have been three years before. Mm-hmm. Feels like time to drop another one. We're getting Odyssey 2. Well, I don't know if it'll be Odyssey 2, but it'll, it'll be something in the vein of Odyssey. New Super or, Mario or, Odyssey. Oh, it could. Caveat, could be Mario Maker 2. Oh. That would be nice. Um, That lets you make 3D Mario games. Oh. Oh. Whoa. 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 Now. Whoa. Now, let's not, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. I'm going to have a heart attack. Um, And, yeah, I think Breath of the Wild 2 or whatever the next Zelda game, I'm hoping. So, here's the thing. I think it releasing in 2020 is probably the Zelda game is wishful thinking. Because if they're not doing anything but making, like, like if they're not doing top-down Zelda's anymore, they're just doing the big open-world 3D stuff, um, they've, n- like, all of their previous ones over, like, the past 15 years have taken five years each. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, 2022 should be when I expect it. <laughs> but 2020! Yeah. Because EG and then we'll keep saying he wants to have it come out every three years. So he's finally going to do it. <laughs> I don't well, know how. Well, I know how because Monolith Soft's going to help them. Because we're gonna, we already have most of the assets. Yeah, yeah. they're just going to make a Breath of the Wild. T- they're going to Majora's Mask. I don't know something. There's a yeah. new Zelda game in 2020. <laughs> It'll be announced next year at E3. And it'll I come mean, out in 2020. Yeah, that's my that's my I, I can. Guess. Here's the thing, Nate. I can easily uh, see it going next year, E3 2020 Zelda. But will it actually release 2020? <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Zelda's the one thing that when they tell point. you release date, just wait for two more years. He, he does have a very good point. <laughs> Zelda's like, yeah, and 2020, and it's delayed. It'll be worth the wait. And usually it's worth the wait. But, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm going to go with their – I'm going to announce next year release in 2020 new Zelda game. I don't know what it is. I think next year, uh, it, since we didn't get it this year, I think next year is going to be – uh, we're going to get Zelda games next year, but it's gonna, just going to be either a port of Twilight Princess and The Wind Waker HD. It'll be a like an HD collection. Or it might even be that, but they throw Skyward Sword in the bunch. Or we get just Skyward Sword HD. I think next year we are going to get some sort of some sort of Zelda game that's not like a, a mainline. It's just going to be a, 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 a either a new HD game like Skyward Sword or a port because they they love those ports. So they're going to port some more. And then 2020, like they're gonna announce, they're gonna announce like Skyward Sword HD or 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 an HD collection of Skyward Sword, The Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess at E3 at the same time they announce the next Zelda game. So it's gonna be like the double whammy. Oh, whoa! Until you get this game next year, here yeah. you go. We're, we're no, we're gonna announce those first, and then oh, by the way, here's a brand new one. And then they drop the brand new one same day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They want it. Yeah. They want it. I mean, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. That would that be weird? Through. You don't even know a Zelda game's even being come. All of a sudden, first AV3. Here's a new Zelda game. By the way, you could buy it today. <laughs> I think everybody just crapped themselves. I, I don't think anyone would watch the rest of E3. Yeah. Right. They would just go buy the Zelda game and be be busy. Oh, by the way, our whole booth is this. <laughs> Again. Again, that you can already buy and play right now, so we don't really need to have it here playable because you already own it, and you're already playing it while you wait in line to get into yes. the booth to play a demo of yes. it. Yes. Because that's Nintendo. Yes. Now, I think next year, because uh, this year was more of a Smash booth because half the booth was Smash. Yes. I think next year's Pokemon because it's the new next generation of uh, Pokemon. Oh, the second Pokemon yeah. game? Yeah. It's Not supposed Let's to Go. Be, like, it's, like, Let's Go is the main line, but yes. like next year is going to be like, Generation eight, so they're gonna. It's gonna be Pokemon theme next year. Yeah. All right, that's gonna do it for the podcast. It already ran longer than I wanted it to, but you know what? Had to go extra long for Marky, my oh, boy. Yeah. He did request that it wasn't just a short one hour podcast. Yeah. Well, you definitely got your long podcast, Mark. <laughs> Gosh darn it! Yeah. That's what I get for throwing in the topic of whatever Mark wants, basically. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Again, don't know what's happening to the podcast after this week while I'm recovering, but hopefully recovery goes well, nothing bad happens, and we make we make something happen, even if it's just Eric and I intimately laying in a bed together How you talking doing? about Nintendo How you as doing? I hug my Mario pillow that I don't have. 
<laughs> yes, I'm hint, Sque- hint, Eric. Sque- hint, hint, your- give me a recovery pillow with Sque- Mario on it. Squeeze your uh, Pokeball stress ball. Oh, balls. yeah, my Pokeball stress ball. Uh, I do have a stuff. I have Donnie. I have Donnie. You guys know him. Donnie the, Donnie the Domino. I got him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll have him him, him intimately in bed with me. Oh, you don't have... Do you Maybe have I should take down my, my Link blanket and have yeah. that in bed with me. Uh, Link. Too bad you don't have the Noid. I mean... I, I know. I know what happened to him. Also, I think that the from the Nintendo community, I think that I speak, for, since I'm the only one from the Nintendo, communi- Nintendo Prime community here that's not Nate or Eric, I think that we all just... Uh, I think we all want to say thank you to Eric and Yulia for taking care of Nate's kids while he gets surgery and uh, props to y'all. Oh, yeah. yeah. And my sister. Oh, yeah. yeah. Technically, my sister's watching. And my Nate's sister, yeah. who I don't know the name yeah, of. Yeah, Casey. She's yeah. watching my kids tomorrow uh, while I actually get surgery. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, Eric will be available to help on, I'm sure, whenever. Yeah. You know, nights and weekends. If, if for some reason uh, I need help, I should be. I don't know. Again, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. But Yuli, I know Yuli is doing a lot. So yes, definitely mad props to her. All right, folks. Well, thanks for tuning in for this episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Remember, you can catch this podcast audio form early next week if you obviously are listening to it now and you're not already a subscriber. Five dollars on Patreon.com. You can get uh, every podcast, most every podcast. Sometimes, like the E3 one, that one wasn't early, but most every podcast you can get a day early audio version exclusively on Patreon for five dollar and up backers at patreon.com slash nintendo prime otherwise you can also get our audio version on itunes on google play on podbean and on anchor and eventually soundcloud whenever i get it figured out <laughs> oh see some of these things cost money like soundcloud costs money podbean costs money i don't have all the money in the world over here but i try to make it happen bring yeah. our podcast to as many people as possible otherwise you can always just catch this video version almost every single monday uh yeah <laughs> Yeah. I say almost because, like, the E3 podcast came on a Thursday. Uh, it was recorded on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. We almost made it. Thank you for subscribing to Nintendo Prime. <laughs> <laughs> we almost made it. Make sure to like and subscribe to this one, folks, <laughs> after I just made your ears bleed. I want to thank Mark Greenberg for being on his first ever Nintendo Prime podcast. Thank you so much, Mark. And for I mean, all, that's why I'm here. Yeah, yeah. All, all the support. He's been a, a $20 plus backer for quite a while, but never actually been on the podcast yeah. until now. So glad to get him in before the, the old surgery. I want to thank Eric over here. Hope all of you guys look forward to other videos we have coming because our E3 coverage is technically not done. But when you listen to this, I still have more impression videos to come out, including Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Just Ooh, wait till boy. you hear what I have to say about that. All right, folks. We'll catch you. No, just kidding. We'll catch you in the next one. Oh,